But enough of this palaver. Let's get the show on the road. You can act like a man. What's the matter with you? And a man in my position can't afford to be made to look ridiculous. He was banging cocktail wages in two at a time. Did anybody listen to Howard Stern this morning? He had some strippers in the studio. They sounded hot. Then he made a joke about a Negro, but Robin laughed, so it was okay. <laughs> That's terrific. That's terrific. <laughs> uh, that's funny. I'm funny. I'm happy. I'm the next. I'm happy. I'm the next. I'm happy. I'm the next. And that's how we begin. Another week of broadcasting on XM Satellite Radio. Hi. It's the Opie and Anthony program with Bill Burr. What's going yes. on? A featured player. I like it. <laughs> it's recurring. Like <laughs> Oliver on the Brady Bunch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ah. How's, yeah. Everyone, uh, how's everyone doing? Make it through the weekend. You make it through uh, Rita. Make it through the Rita coverage. I was kind of bummed because uh, I, w- I was with the Hurricane Rita pregame show for five days. Yeah. Five fucking days. And then uh, I took off for the weekend. I went to Atlantic City on Friday night and played three-card poker. And I had to email Anthony immediately because some schmuck right next to me gets a uh, straight flush yeah. on a $50 bet. You sit there long enough, it happens to you. 40, one, 40 to 1 odds, so yep. you're talking a $2,000 hand, basically. It's a nice payout. $2,000 on one fucking hand. I end up losing $200, but had a good time. No big deal. Yeah. You I, gotta, uh, I don't gamble like Anthony. I don't go nuts. You got to sit there. If you sit there at that three-card uh, poker table long enough, you'll hit one of the big hands. You just got to have enough uh, in your bankroll to keep your ass in the seat long enough and then before you know it uh, you got three of a kind you get a straight flush something happens for you and uh you're making big money i'm done with three card poker are you it's all about let it ride what you've been playing let it ride let it ride (laughs) 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 yeah the the real gamers hate that game i was gonna say that just sounds like a game for losers (laughs) like there's no strategy no it's it's uh they call that one of the sucker games down there, yeah. but, but it just somebody's like gotta one. win, you know. Yeah, let it ride. Let it ride, baby. <laughs> you wanna take that with you or let it ride? <laughs> let, let it, it ride. ride. <laughs> oh <laughs> that's what you're alive. <laughs> oh! I'm gonna go play what do you say, big shot? <laughs> <laughs> you hear a lot of excitement and then uh then uh Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's the dumbest game down there. Let it ride. Let it ride. Like you're feeling like a high roller. That's it. You're a high roller. I'm one of the big shots here, Pally. Playing Let It Ride. I'm gonna get comped at the buffet. So like, well, they'll fly anybody in. They fly my friends in. Really? Oh yeah. They got credit card companies calling them every fucking day. Oh shit. They get, yeah, Bally's hooks us up. Yeah. No, you're hooking Bally's up. Yeah, yeah of believe course. me. You're, you're, They're not taking anything out of their pocket for you. You're making a great point because we all have friends and stuff that hey dude, uh, I'm I'm being flown to Vegas and I got a suite and yeah, they're hooking me up. No, they know you're a big time sucker. Yeah, they get yet your own sucker uh, gold card that they give right. you. Right. Yeah. Overall. You're never a winner. You're never, ever... There's not one person overall that's a winner. It doesn't work that way. Yeah. You could go on one trip and, and leave ahead from the time you went, but unless you go to Atlantic City once or any of the Vegas or Mohegan one time, win and never go back again, you give it yeah, back. Yeah, play for 20 minutes. Yeah, play for 20 minutes, win, get back on the bus, <laughs> get back on the jitney, and leave, <laughs> uh, you, you, they, you always give it back. 
Yeah. You're never ahead in your gambling winnings. It just doesn't work. I also realize the worst time to be recognized for being Opie from the Opie and Anthony program uh -huh. is when you're losing money. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, yeah. that's me, but shut up. I'm trying to win some money back here. Yeah. Hey, what's the matter? <laughs> what's the matter? You having to run a bad cards? <laughs> yeah. Fuck you, ass. Come on, Opie, let it ride. <laughs> let it ride. I'm one of those assholes. I play, uh, I play roulette. Yeah. And I stand there with all my chips, and I just watch the trees, and I wait for like you know five reds in a row, and I just put it all on black, and then I'll hit once, and then I just scoop them off. <laughs> oh, and really? Walk away. <laughs> You're that guy. Like, like a fucking old lady. <laughs> I really actually, after a while, think I can see it. Dude, yeah. I can feel it. I can feel it. I know when it's coming. Use the force. It just seems so easy. It seems like it's like 50-50, and then you just got those couple of greens in there. The that greens just, just throw you off. Up. Yeah, yeah, takes the 50-50 right out of it. You Green. Know, and they got, and they got math mathematicians, like these guys who can like figure out, like they have like a theory to figure out how much liquid is in a cylinder. <laughs> they have like that kind of mathematical knowledge rigging these games, and you're sitting there, well, you know, okay, red, black, kind of 50-50. It's a coin toss. A couple of greens, it's like, what, 48%? It's, it's, a, it's a coin toss if sometimes the coin lands on the edge. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty much it. <laughs> sometimes this fucker's going to land on the edge. You're not going to get heads or tails, you idiot. But the point I'm making is I decided to take off for the weekend, so I was uh, behind in my Hurricane Rita coverage. Yes. Because I was following that around the clock 24-7. Who was it? With all these fine uh, news channels we got. And so I wake up Saturday morning... And I actually ran out to my car because I didn't I didn't have access uh, to TV really uh, to turn on XM mm. to see what was going on. And within five minutes Saturday morning, I knew this this storm was a bust. Yeah, this storm was a bust. Nothing. I know some coastal towns got destroyed and stuff, but those people know. That, but those people know what they're in for when they're living down there. That's not like you have a house. Uh, inland or something, and because of a levee breaking, uh, you know, right, it gets uh, flooded. They knew, you know, their houses were on stilts. Well, they have built on stilts. You know, and and it's and it's sad for those people, obviously. But let's let's face it, uh, the news doesn't give a shit as much as no. they did for Hurricane Katrina. Mm -hmm. Where's the around the clock coverage, post storm coverage? Where's, Where's the, the boats? I don't see any front page headlines here about Hurricane Rita. It wasn't Sean Penn in the boat. Right. The reality is it wasn't yeah, big where's enough. Yeah, Sean? Where was Sean Penn in his little boat I with was, his shotgun? I was starting to think the news crews cared about humanity. But now I'm, i got to go back to they don't really give a shit. Oh, you don't stop now. They don't give a shit. There are people they that... They care. That, Sean, Sean Penn could have rescued everyone from this last hurricane in his boat. <laughs> yeah. Like There's six people. nothing happening. No. More people died evacuating. Then died in the hurricane. Yeah, in that bus. In More that people bus died on that one bus with the old people yeah. on the oxygen. Yeah, yeah, you're correct, Bill. The old people. But in the post, they have uh, a before and after shot, and there's yeah. not one house left in this one coastal, like, I don't know, little island. island. It was a strip of beach. It's a peninsula, I a believe. Little peninsula. Surrounded peninsula? on three sides was by water. Was it a peninsula? Yes. Yeah, let's call it a peninsula. And not one house. No. Not even uh, the the hint that a house was there. No remains of a house. The stilts. And that's because all those houses, they know when they're building down there, they they, they can't have basements or any of that crap, and they're mm. pretty much just setting their houses on the ground. Knowing that if a hurricane hits them directly, they're screwed. Yeah, but until the hurricane hits, they got some great waterfront property, and they're that's their that really is they're rocking. Like, that's their green on the if wheel. If you go out to your front yard with like a like a little kitty uh, pail in that that little scoop and just like dig down about six inches, you're already hitting seawater. Yeah, mm -hmm. you got water coming. You pretty much know if uh, you get a hurricane, you're screwed. You know, you're screwed. I, and a lot of people were affected by this hurricane, but you're just not going to see the coverage uh, today like you did with Hurricane Katrina. Oh, be the sequel, not as good as the, uh, the Not first as good. One. We were talking about hurricane sequels yep. on, what, Thursday or Friday last week? Mm -hmm. and yeah. Yeah, this sequel blows. Absolutely blows. Mm -hmm. And now Jones. it's a nightmare going back into Houston. Yeah, all those people that evacuated Houston and Galveston and uh, both of those uh, cities just got brushed by the hurricane. Um they left for nothing, for no reason. Fear. Uh, now, you're going to be hard-pressed to get people out of these cities again. This or girl, out of any other was saying city. to me, like, yeah, they're saying that maybe, like, in Houston, some of those skyscrapers could come down. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, they're not coming down. The skyscrapers can fall. No, they won't. Well, that was the fear that the TV gave yeah, us. Yeah, the so. news. But don't, when they build them, they have to be able to withstand hurricane of force course. winds and then some so they don't fall down? They're not going to fall down. And they're begging everyone not to return to Houston all at the same time. Mm -hmm. Who's going to be the guy that's like, yeah, all right, I'll wait. I'll wait. 
Fuck that. Everyone's I'll jumping in their out. cars immediately and getting back as soon, as you know fast as possible. It's like those people that sit in the movie theater for everybody to leave before they get up and go. You know, you see them sitting there, the movie's over, the credits are rolling. They're the people that'll wait. And there's usually maybe two or three that's, of them in the theater. Yeah. Everyone else gets up and crowds the aisle. That's because there was some obscure song in the movie, and you got to wait to see who did it. So you can just who go, is that? Oh, oh Lou oh, Reed. That's the guy. Oh. And then by the time you get to your car, you forgot. Oh, I hate when you see get up there too, for 10 minutes. And they start huffing and puffing like, oh. <laughs> Yeah. And you're walking by because they want to know who the what fifth that? lead was. You know what I do? Was I this filmed in Panavision? i got to wait for the end now. Well, when they huff Special and puff. Special thanks to everybody from Cincinnati. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When they huff and puff, I turn around and go, it's just words. It's just <laughs> words, you. There's no pictures up there. <laughs> or some dumb, uh, you know, actor, and you're like, oh, how do I know him? You ever see the movies, though, the credits end, and then they come back well, on they, and they do ch- a little something? Oh, little do Ferris a little, Bueller. Yeah, a little Ferris Bueller action. Uh, there have been a couple of movies where they do that. The credits are all over. And then, boom, you, you see a little part of the movie that everyone would have missed. And but you can kind of see that. If you've seen see like a coming. period piece, you know, mm-hmm. get the fuck out of the, the movie theater. <laughs> <laughs> I think that Night of the Living Dead, the, the sequel, Dawn of the Dead, or Day of the Dead, or one of those dead that they did before the last dead they did, the one with Ving Rhames, <laughs> the dead one they did in the mall. Uh, the end of that one, uh, a lot of people were leaving. And the the things they were flashing on the credits is the end of the movie. Like, you would think the movie ended with them going to this island and everything's hunky-dory and, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll wait till the next movie. Uh, you don't realize everyone dies. Mm-hmm. They all get killed. You wouldn't know that unless you sat through the credits. And for those of you that waited for uh, On Demand, you were going to catch it uh, this week, uh, you should have seen it sooner. I like yeah. movies like that. Everyone's dead. So, uh, yeah, I like everyone die movie. What do we got on Hurricane Rita? Anything? We're dead. What are the headlines? Headlines? There, there really aren't any. You know, no one, no one cares. No one cares. There's some flooding. Um, it's about it. They showed like one inch of water over huge areas. Like yeah. a big parking lot was their big thing. They would be in front of a parking lot or a church and go, look at the uh, the flooding. Yeah, you get that here during a big They storm. showed a picture of a mailbox today on the news. Yeah, unless it was 18 feet high, uh, the mailbox really didn't look that flooded. No, it looks like uh, the mailman could still deliver the Of mail. course he can. Thank God. There are trucks driving on the roads. They're showing that. An announcement to the people that were affected by Hurricane Rita. You are not getting your benefit concert. I'm sorry. Nope, you're no charities. Not, you're just not getting that concert today. <laughs> no uh, eBay. You won't be seeing any Opie and Anthony memorabilia in your name going up on uh, eBay. It wasn't sorry. Im- it wasn't important enough for Sean Penn to get a fucking <clears throat> rowboat. I'm sorry. That's I right. didn't see one helicopter dropping a harness down to pick up a family. John Travolta won't be putting his one hand on your shoulder. <laughs> no. No one from Galveston <laughs> or Houston is getting John Travolta's hand on their They're shoulder. They're going to get the like the sea level stars. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Kathy Griffin's going to show up. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, they've been through enough. <laughs> Help you mop your driveway, they have your been patio. I want to be with you on this and I can't even think of another sea level celebrity. <laughs> yeah, you go, uh, that, that guy was, on that like, 70 show. Yeah, I was I was running through sitcoms real fast like <laughs> Couldn't even think of one. <laughs> Not one. Screech is helping you there rebuild. You there you go. There's the hack one to throw out So there. no Celine Dion uh, crying. Take a kayak. The kayak. No. She's not going to be uh, yelling and screaming that You're people should touch things because they're, they're too poor to have these things in real life. You're getting Kim Carnes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll go with Kim Cards. Sure, why not? That's another thing. You, you, don't get to, you don't get to loot after this one? No. It's not a devastating storm unless there was looting. There's no looting. The store owner's sitting there sweeping. Like, everything's fine. No one, no one left. He's still there in front of his little shop. <laughs> no looting. I know, you saw, like, all dead bodies. In, like, New Orleans, this one, there's, like, some guy in a hammock who, ah, shit, he, his ass got a little wet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, like, Damn slept it. through the whole store. Yeah, there's bloated dead bodies floating down the streets of uh, New Orleans, but this one, eh, kind of anticlimactic. Kind yeah, of a little bit, a little bit, and I knew right away, but they had to still go with that, that coverage uh, around the clock o- over the weekend, they and they just really didn't have anything. Mm-hmm. Did uh, Geraldo Rivera, like, push someone out of the way to get him on a mm-hmm. on a helicopter or something? Really? I don't know. I was reading something in the paper today, but he's denying it. Like he pushed the pushed the National Guard away because they were doing a shot for TV. Does anyone know anything further about that? This? He wanted what, him out of the shot. No, supposedly. I guess uh, I don't know. Give me the post there. 
Is it in the post? It, yeah, so it's got to be true. Where right? half the fucking front page of these newspapers are their scratch and win games. Oh, yeah. I know. The, the Daily News, I watched, I looked at yesterday, the Sunday Daily News, half of the front page was th- their big news was their scratch game. And now uh, the New York Post, half the front page is uh, uh, their new card game inside. Post poker. One million dollars scratch and win. I love when they put the N there. Scratch and win. Gives it some real credibility on the cover of their paper. Oh, it might be in the back. Is I it? love the names of those. Like, set for life hours. Like, yeah. that's just like you have no game plan. You're going to win this? You're going to be set for life. <laughs> Dude, I'm all set. I got a dollar now. I got 90 billion to one chance. Telling you, guys are laughing at me. Said for life. Everyone else is like going to college. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a buck. Yeah, you go to college, you got like a, you know, you got an 80% chance of doing all right. This guy's yeah. playing a one in a billion. <laughs> yeah, the guy going to college is like, I'm going to get an education. I'm becoming yeah. a doctor. I'll be set, set for, for life. life. Yes. <laughs> this guy, yeah, hey, you can just buy a card <laughs> behind the register. <laughs> got the same chance. Set yeah. for life. Getting back to the Geraldo thing real fast. Uh, they're saying now there is no evidence that the Fox News Channel reporter had nudged an Air Force rescuer out of the way to get on TV helping a wheelchair-bound woman onto a rescue flight. As Stanley claimed in a column about Hurricane Katrina coverage. He is just awful, Geraldo. So, well, I remember driving uh, down to Atlantic City, and they had a report from Geraldo Rivera, and he, was, and he said that he's just staying put. And I'm like... And I was thinking, oh, my God, Geraldo Rivera is going to die because he's stupid. No, unfortunately, things don't work that way. A busload of elderly will go up, but Geraldo will continue. All right, let's say hi to Charlie. Hey, Charlie, what's up? Hey, what's going on, guys? Hi, Jimmy's replacement. What's going on? Uh, That uh, story with Geraldo. uh, What happened was the Times reporter, uh, she's a... TV critic or something, wrote that she, she was watching coverage of uh, Fox News during uh, Katrina, and uh, she saw Gerardo push some guy from the military out of the way, or nudge him, as she wrote, uh, to, to help some woman down a flight of stairs uh, in a wheelchair, and uh, Fox showed the uh, videotape several times, and there's the case of ever, as far as uh, uh, Gerardo pushing anybody out of the way. No, he didn't. So, of course... Fox demanded a, an apology from the New York Times, and the New York Times refused. Oh, really? So that's basically the story. And there was a follow-up, uh, read uh, an editorial yesterday uh, from somebody else who's basically saying the New York Times was wrong, and it was in the New York Times. Well, the Times and Fox News are um, yeah. polar opposites. Yeah. That's it. All right, Charlie, thank you. On you now. All right. So there's not really anything to that. No. All right. Uh, I'll just acknowledge right off the bat my Jets suck. <clears throat> Fuck. Fuck. Now you gotta cut some injuries. Idiot. You idiot. <laughs> idiot. Yeah, they lost to Jacksonville 26 to 20 in overtime. And, oh, like, and now what are you gonna won. do? What? And now what are you gonna do? Your quarterback is uh, injured? Well, I like the Bills. Very injured. Oh, you're just switching teams? <laughs> that's. I like that's the handy. Bills. Yeah. Me and my brother were Jets fans and Bills fans because. Yeah. How? Well, we both spent a lot of time in uh, Western New York going to college, and I started my radio career up there. So it's I have this weird thing. I still I follow the Bills and the Jets. I know it sounds ridiculous. And, and for the people in the rest of the country, but it's good. As soon as one team starts sucking, you can jump on the other bandwagon. Just because <laughs> Buffalo uh, uh, Bills are in Buffalo and Buffalo's in New York, it absolutely does not mean that if you're from New York, you're a, a Buffalo fan. Oh, of course not. Like people in New York City don't even consider Buffalo uh, the Bills like a New York team. They don't even acknowledge it. Yeah. You would oh. think that would be a New York team. We no. don't even acknowledge no. that Buffalo's part of New York. I know. That's Canada. Right. It's some kind of entity unto itself. It's southern Canada. Yeah. I always hated the people who were way out there and they, they would be like Yankee fans back before yeah. the Red Sox won it. <laughs> I'd be like, dude, Cleveland is like fucking 40 miles away from you. You're an Indians fan, but they suck. Yeah, that was during like the Yankees dynasty. Like everybody, all these transplant, all these comedians I knew, they were like from Pittsburgh and Florida. Dude, I was always a big Yankee fan. Really? Talk about them in the '80s. Name one fucking player. <laughs> uh, exactly. 
By the way, the uh, the Bills lost to the Falcons 24-16. to Oops. So, so now I'm going to be following the the uh, Patriots because well, if you go with the Patriots, well, because Anthony and I we did three years of radio in Boston, so I have a little. Oh, that gives you a little clout, yeah. a little bit, a little bit. He's so. done the whole AFC East. Yeah. So I'm, <laughs> so I'm going to be Who's left. For... Miami's next. You guys get fired up here. Well, I was down in Miami once, so drove through yeah, once. Went to the beach there. Patriots beat the Steelers 23 to 20, and Brady had just another. Another amazing fucking game. Yeah, Ben. My quarterback, ben happy. Chad Pennington, he threw for 76 yards. Ben, how many yards did Tom Brady have yesterday? 300 and something. 370, Jesus. I think. Yeah, wow. He had a good game. Yeah, great. He even had an interception, but they still won. So. He'll be at Daisy's drinking, and uh, <laughs> Chad will be in an MRI fucking tube. <laughs> the best <laughs> is they bring Fiedler in, and he, what, he win for three plays? Or how and many then plays? he got hurt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they couldn't keep the. Uh, and then some, I guess, linemen guys started off. throwing. I don't know. Fuck. Hey, Philadelphia, how's your kicking game? Yeah, what he, the, the kicker got hurt, and they had to put like linemen in kicking. It was hilarious. <laughs> I only saw the right. highlights of it, but oh, trying to wonderful. kick a field goal. Yeah, the ball went like three feet. See, I got to see this footage. Ben told me yeah. about this when we got in today, and uh, supposedly. Their kicker got hurt, so hurt his hamstring. True. Yeah, and I, the, the best guy they could find was a lineman. I don't know what he was. He Where's was your backup kicker? guy? He's probably kicking it straight on like George Blanda. <laughs> He's got like the old jo uh, John Unitas high tops. <laughs> it was hysterical. <laughs> yeah, but uh, he was like this huge guy trying to kick a field goal, and the ball went nowhere. And then they had him kick off. They had another guy kick off. Oh, no. So the kicker came in and won the game for him, but whatever he did, he fucked his whole leg up at the end of the game because he just went down right after he made the game winning yeah. kick. So someone else had to kick, try to kick a field goal and went nowhere, and then he, then another guy kicked off and it went ten yards or something like that. Well, that was a good game. Have a backup guy. It was funny. A backup he, kicker. Yeah, you don't have one. They don't even consider no. the kicker as part of the team. That's why they was kind of laughing that he was hurt. Like he, he this was plant leg. Where like his uh, his hamstring was fucked up, so he kicked yeah. the game one and one, and then he just went down wincing, holding his back leg like it was like this, you know, you know <laughs> Vietnam War movie. And they're like, ah, get up, moment. you pussy. Get up, who cares about you? <laughs> Even when he winced in pain, he didn't look like a warrior. He just looked like some <laughs> pussy. Like ah, nothing's I, better than I when hurt my ankle. when something fucks up and the kicker's got to pick the ball up <laughs> and either run or try to throw it or something <laughs> with oh. these moose just coming after him. <laughs> He's wearing like those slippers. Yeah, he got the slippers. His one little bar in front of his yeah. uh, his face. <laughs> he goes back to being the pussy that he was in grammar school. You know, he tries to throw it. He lifts his yeah. arm up and it flies behind him. Yeah, <laughs> it goes end over end. Wall, 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 wall. Those are wonderful moments. Those guys still have to work for pussy. That's the funniest thing. You're, yeah. you're like you could have a Super Bowl ring. Yeah, you're just sitting there all like sheepy. You're still <laughs> sheepy. <laughs> Ah, the Dolphins looked good yesterday. They beat Carolina 27-24. to 24. The amazing one is San Francisco almost beat Dallas. They, they came back. They were getting killed the whole game. Yeah, Dallas uh, was... That's right. Oh, that's right. Wow. Dallas won, they but I don't know back. how. They Dallas San 34, San Francisco 31, and then uh, uh, another great game for the Giants there. Wow. <laughs> San Diego 45, Giants 23. Holy oh, they shit. suck. Ah, he's, yeah. just, uh, he, he's just like his brother. He actually had a pretty good game, though. He had a pretty good game. They just got smoked. San Diego's a good team. Nah, he's actually uh, developing as a pretty good quarterback. And look at Green. Has Green Bay won a game this year? Does anyone know? I really. I'm I think they're on three. I'm not following Green Bay this year. Yeah, poor Brett Favre. No. I think he's Tampa done. Bay 17, Green Bay. 16. Are they 0 three? I think he's done. They're Green Bay. Three? Wow. Look at that. Who would have thought that? All right. Well. But the Philly, the Philly kicker. We got to find the footage of that. It was unbelievable. I got to see that. God, check that out. All right, why don't we take our first break, do some dangs, and then we'll come back and talk about, uh, I don't know, I guess we could talk about Demi Moore and Ashton Kutcher. Oh, secret marriage. Oh. Secret marriage. Secret. And then, um, and we could talk about breast cancer. What's her? What's his name there, uh, her uh, ex-husband there, uh, Bruce, uh, Bruce Willis? Willis? He, he was at the wedding. I don't know, let's get into it next. How's that sound? How that works. I don't know how that works. He must have dumped her. Yeah. That's the only way I could show up. How the hell do you show up? Nice, that's Disturbed doing Land of Confusion, the old Genesis song. We're back with the Opie and Anthony program. So you want to talk about uh, Stalker Patty and Big A real fast? Yeah, the videos are up on uh, foundrymusic.com. Uh, they had their course. big date last week. We talked about it on, I guess, Friday, and now the videos yeah. are all up for your viewing pleasure. Yes, there's uh, five video clips of um, Nathaniel interviewing them in the cab, 
and uh, their their little cab ride there to um, Little Italy. Then them walking down the street, uh, Big A playing the dart game to try to win Patty uh, some prizes, Ooh. and just he, he he is so horrid. He is so. You see the faces he was making, uh, Nathaniel, when he, when he was uh, throwing the darts, and and he'd hit two out of three, so he couldn't win the big prize. And and his fa- the disappointment and anger in his face when he couldn't win uh, for his sweetheart is uh, priceless. You just got to download. Oh, he, he has he has definitely a, a big level of rage that he has oh. tapped into. When you guys were talking about his breath, yeah, <laughs> did you see his forehead when his eyes yeah. started? His eyebrows went down like very angry. Uh, his his face got uh, yeah like he wanted to kill us. But he hasn't really tapped into that yet. As that's far why as I kept trying seen. to say something like reinforcing or positive to him. Mm-hmm. because uh, Yeah, that's how it's played. That's how the game is played. I, oh, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> you know, rip apart, rip apart. Build right up. Right before the brink. Let him down. Let some air out. <laughs> open up the check valve. Let off some steam. Close it. Build it up. It'll stoke the furnace. And then <laughs> call blammy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully it explodes in someone else's face. <laughs> so the videos are pretty disturbing. Uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, the, the first wheel, the what's Ferris that wheel is just oh, well, it, uh, there's some Ferris wheel. It, it just looked like the. B- b- first of all, who's going on a Ferris wheel at the uh, San Gennaro? That thing looked like a hazard. Just looked like it was waiting to cut someone in half. And uh, they, they go to get on it. Him and Patty sit in the seat, and then the guy that runs it comes up and you couldn't hear it but you could see the guy leans over to Big A and says something and Big A gets out of the seat and then they uh, put the bar across Patty and uh, and you hear one, one I think it was Danny or, or Nathaniel uh, asking what happened and Big A goes um too big <laughs> oh. the guy they were already seated in it ready to close up the little safety bar and uh, the guy told Nathan- uh, told uh, uh, Big A you, you gotta you gotta leave yeah too- too big. <laughs> yeah, too big. Well, check out the videos for yourself on opianthony.com and foundrymusic.com. Yeah. Before we move on to other things, we got audio coming in about uh, Hurricane Rita and the effects. Ooh. I guess. It's just uh, a quick little piece from Good Morning America. It's a major issue across the country. In Lexington, Kentucky, rising gas prices have forced a number of school districts to move to a four-day week. And in one district, they're already saving nearly $300,000. In South Carolina, an entire county government will go four-day, ten hours a day, starting October 1st. Oconee County says it budgeted for $2.50 a gallon and not a cent higher. Now we're experiencing $3 a gallon. So that 50 cents uh, makes a lot of difference when you add several thousand gallons of uh, fuel per year. There is some concern the governor of Georgia may have helped cause the panic he is trying to prevent. For this state's school children, today is definitely Christmas in September. Charlie. How cool is that? (laughs) Four-day... Oh, wow, there it is. Big A. Look at that rage. Wow, he does get the rage after he misses with the dart. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, he just squeeze you to death. He'd, he'd like, break you like a toy. Yeah. His, his eyes go up into his head slightly. That's the look he gives. But anyway, you hear that, Ant? The, uh, yeah. They're only going to school for four days a week because of the gas prices. It saves money. But if you're a kid, you don't give a fuck. You got a day off. Awesome. That rules. But the stupid, you know, the stupid teachers make up for it always. Mm-hmm. They work you a little harder in the classroom. More tonight. homework. More homework. Yeah, I'm sure when you're not in on that Friday, if it's a Friday that they're taking off, if you're not in that one day a week, they just load you up with so much homework that you would it would take you a full school day uh, to complete it anyway at home. Yeah. It was never fun. Oh, yeah, one of those asshole teachers. Yeah. We're still going to stay on schedule. Right. You're still going to do the work that I have figured out, their little program they put together at the beginning of the year. Start going on pace like those Japanese kids over there. You gotta go like 15 hours a day, <laughs> yeah. sing the school song, crying, <laughs> to show that you really love it. Did you ever see that on 60 Minutes? These fucking guys are working at like a company, like a Fortune 500 company, yeah. and you know I, they didn't work their you know nine zillion hours for the week, so they yeah. lost face. 
Right. And their whole family just like abandons them and they send them to this boot camp. But at one point you have to go in front of the board of directors and sing the company song. And these guys, you got to like show, they like cry yeah. like, oh, ma, oh, yeah. <laughs> like you're in your underwear. And the whole board of directors is just staring at you like, like fucking Mount Rushmore. In your underwear. And if you, you, don't, if you, don't, if you don't cry in enough, if they don't believe it. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> and then they just look and they're just like, yeah. nah. You're not selling it. You're not. <laughs> and your career is fucking over. And then and you, there's no support system. The family, you, you lost face. Yeah. yeah. They turned that entire, like, samurai battle all for the emperor thing into commercialism, into work. Oh, like, yeah. that's the same dedication the soldiers had to the emperor. That's some, that's 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 some deep-seated shit. That's why their eyes are like that. It's, it's stress. Just, That's from migraine headaches. Look at all the work that they have yeah. to do. <laughs> I gotta do this for an hour? Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was it. All for the emperor, and now it's all for, you know, the company they work for. It's the same dedication that they had well, for their country. As far as country. my little knowledge over that, I think the Japanese—they're like the white people of the Asians. Yeah, and uh, like they stole from like the uh, the Chinese, and they right. said they're a bunch of animals. <laughs> That's why in that Bruce Lee movie, he said he kicks the shit out of that uh, that that Shogun warrior, and then yeah. when, he, when he after he kicks him, you know, kicks the shit out of him, he goes, and by the way. I am not an animal. And when they had it in China, the whole place was like, yeah. Yeah. Ah. He did like a wave. Ah. <laughs> ah. All right, we got more audio from Hurricane Rita. It's the weather montage. Oh. When a hurricane comes through, man, you got to have the hurricane montage. It's a montage. Of all the people in the eye of the storm, the reporters. The rain is being dropped all over. She is so big. She's so widespread. Um, when she makes landfall, it's going to be a couple hours. It's going to get worse. Oh, that's great. Greta Van Susteren. Her face probably didn't move with all that wind, but the facelift she's got. What yeah. the hell? You probably couldn't tell that she was in the middle of a hurricane. No. Her, her, her face is so tight. <laughs> it just looks like she's constantly being hit by 100-mile-an-hour winds. <laughs> she probably never face. had a facelift. That's just, just from standing in... 180 mile. <laughs> I'm here. Yeah. It's a hurricane. <laughs> Gonna get worse. Yeah, I know it is. The inside of this hotel now looks like the outside of this hurricane. What? Five o'clock in the morning. This is the closest that the center of circulation has come to us here in Beaumont. The wind is howling. The rain is horizontal. The sun is out and the windows have blown out. I can see the. Guys, I, I can't, I, I can't hear you, but if you can hear me and see me, it's thanks a large part to our satellite truck operator. That looks like it's impossible to stand it. Yet you're doing it. <laughs> I'm sorry, are you talking to me? You're it's talking 535. to me. We're still at the height of Rita howling winds. Debris litters the streets, but what's dangerous now is the water is rapidly rising behind us. Rain up this way. And, and I mean, I don't know if you can see it, but it, it, it's literally this wall. Uh, it, it is like a solid mass, and it, it, I mean, it, it, it'll just whip you up and, and blow you away. <laughs> I don't know if you can see, but it's raining out and, and things are getting wet. It's windy here in the hurricane. They just stand there in the wind, and it's really not that big a I'd deal. I'd my hair, but that's futile at this point. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what are you doing? They find the worst place they could stand, is what they do, next to a building, so maybe the air is funneling a certain way, out in an open parking lot, so they get in the brunt of it. And still, they are indeed standing there. Right. It's not blowing them off their feet. It's windy, sure. It's a, it's a hurricane. But it's not nearly as horrid and dangerous as they're trying to make it sound. The windows are blown out of this building. You think right before they went to it live, they broke those windows? <laughs> you know, <laughs> like we were talking in the back office. Uh, you know, just push a car into a swimming pool or something. Yeah. To get the impressive shock. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, even that montage just didn't sound as Im- as impressive as the montage from Hurricane Katrina. No. No. Yeah, no. New Orleans doesn't exist anymore. I mean, that's the big story. That, you yeah, know what I mean, you you, you can't. Yeah, you can't top New Orleans unless another one. Even that wouldn't it wouldn't top it if it, another one came into New Orleans because everyone's gone. Right. That was the big one. That's it. But the news they they want to try to keep it going. This was the second killer storm. Oh my God! Here we are. That's not as big. Uh, Doctor J, what's up? What's up, Mister Awesome or Mister That's Classic? You know what I? You know my drift here, Opie. Is that every time that Bill or Anthony or Anthony and Jim have a great riff going on a topic and you can't contribute because you have nothing witty to say, mm-hmm. right in the middle of it, you'll just fucking just say, oh, that's awesome, that's classic. Let's go back to Katrina. Let's go back to this. When are you going to just let these guys roll instead of be the director? You know, Monday morning and you're taking this call up? Yeah, just to... You are a brave not? soul. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> right, Anthony, this is no, a you, Friday you, call. Anthony, Dr. You know, J, we, Dr. J, we all have our crutches, sir. Anthony, you know it's true. Everyone knows it. Oh yeah. Okay. Let me let me go go with that one. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree with you, Doctor J. Yeah. This is, this is divide and conquer. This is the divide and conquer guy. There's guys out there all the time doing this. Wait, it, why is the caller ID coming up as Jimmy Norton's number? <laughs> Jimmy. Doctor J, thanks for your phone call. We appreciate it. But you have no idea how a radio show works, so I would just sit there and shut the fuck up. Thank you. Remember, remember the guy that used to call up. Uh, who was the racist guy? Oh, that's awesome. I don't know. You should really that's do that. awesome. You should that's really excellent. do that, Opie, and just let the two of us spin off into oblivion. And just, <laughs> just, they'll just start dying. You know what happened? And then the and conversation and would and degenerate into us talking about, I don't know, the hands on the clock or something. <laughs> There's a, like, what? There are asses out there that have no idea how this radio show works. <laughs> have no idea. Everyone has to play a role on this program. And quite oh. frankly, my role at times is very fucking boring. Very boring. Unbelievable. But then I have to be, someone in this room has to, has to move on to other things. Or, it, like you yeah. said, it would just, it would just be a great just conversation that, that turns into nothing eventually. Just keeps going. Yeah. It, it, you, if you don't have some type of director on a movie, do you think, like, Keanu Reeves can just riff a movie? Do <laughs> 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 you think he can just riff a movie? I don't think it's happening. I can put it, th- uh, put it this way. <laughs> Hurricane Rita is still out there somewhere. Are we yeah. following the coverage? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's now just blowing at, I don't know, maybe 25 miles an hour right now. Yeah. But are the news crews still running after it? They've moved on. Are they moving in, moving to that other town out there that is now being hit by Hurricane Rita where the Another wind story. speeds are maybe 15 miles an hour? Another no, story. No, the director has moved on to the next hurricane. There's the next story in line. Which is uh, scratch and match. Scratch and match. Do you do, do you do remember the guy though, the racist guy? What which was his name? Which racist guy? Oh, racist. oh. Uh, he used to call up. You know what I'm talking yeah, about. That this guy, guy would yeah. call up and just Vinny the racist. Spout Vinny the racist. Thank you, Nathaniel. He'd spout the most racist stuff, and then when he's done, because I'd be going, "Oh my God!" Yeah, you know, and he'd go, "Come on, Anthony. You know what I'm talking about, right?" And they try to get you into the uh, whole circle. Like the divide and conquer thing. Anthony Wright, come on now, huh? Yeah, okay, right. I used right. to work with a guy like that. He like hated like like black people so much they wouldn't even be doing anything and he could still make it sound bad. <laughs> <laughs> he would just be we'd be in the car, he'd be like, Look at him walking down the street. <laughs> I, I do that too, you know. Walk. No, but dude, you know it's the way they do it, you know, like they fucking own the sidewalk or something. It's like not really, dude. They're just kind of just kind of oh, going to work. So I, that, that's a guy that doesn't like my role on the show. What can Obviously, I tell you? we all have our haters. Doctor J. I can tell you this much: I've been doing radio since I was 18. I make a lot of money doing it, and if I was that bad, trust me, the company would love to get rid of my salary. It's all about the numbers in the end. So I think I'm doing just fine as far as XM thinks. Dr. J. Loser. If that was an instant feedback, Opie, I'd abandon him. I'd abandon him. Mm. I didn't have to go there. I went there, though. Monday, though. Wow. <laughs> I know. That's, that's such a Friday call. Because <laughs> it's, it's like, all right, goodbye, I'm out. <laughs> After you know you've had a lot of good stuff. You've got that, a whole week. You contributed yeah. to the show. Yeah. It's like, do you know what we did this week? Right. I know. That was... You rattle off right. like four hours a day of what we're doing. Monday? What did you do? 30... I woke up. 37 minutes into the first yeah. hour. Your big accomplishment was answering your alarm clock this morning. That's right. That's it. Eric in Jersey. What's up, Eric? 
What's going on? Open knee, amp knee. Amp open and knee. Yeah, we do get that a lot. Opening an amp and then amp Open knee and a manam manam manam. Um, I have a tragic report about Rita. Yes. And I'm in Roseland, New Jersey, and my company's picnic might be postponed to Wednesday. Why? Because it may rain. Oh, we're we getting rain from this hurricane now. Of course. Is that what Rita? Going on? What does it mean for our area? We've we've uh, gotten those uh, reports. Right. Yeah, it's coming up. Uh, we're gonna get some rain, some humidity, and uh, that's it. How and so we're sandbagging the parking lot How so we don't we get. How we handle Rita? All right. Thank you, Eric. And, and they try to make it sound like that. Rita headed our way, and they get on the weather. The remnants of Rita should um you know some rain. Yeah. Back to you. By the way, to Dr. J, because I guarantee he's still listening. See, I cut that phone call off because it was going nowhere and saved us about 30 seconds of bad radio. No, that guy was, uh, I think he was just picking up a head of steam. Uh, John and Cortland, what's up? <laughs> Dr. J knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> now I'm going to point out everything I do on the show today to Dr. J. Oh, that'll be good. <laughs> All the subtle little things I do. I'm pushing a button. That I, get no, gonna, that I get no credit for. You watch, Dr. J. It's slowly into a rage. Of you watch. Of course. By, by 5 of 11. You see that, Jay? <laughs> <laughs> That's what the fuck I'm talking about? You sit back and watch. I'm like a surgeon in here. <laughs> we love to think this shit just brush it off. It just rolls <laughs> off us. Nothing. But it just, it's a slow build. No, it never does. When I did my HBO special, Killing One Girl in the Crowd. Standing there, I, she looked like Carrie in that movie. <laughs> just like she was willing me to bomb, and I kept looking at her like, "Are you fucking kidding me? What more do I gotta do?" That's pissing you off. Yeah, it did. everyone else is fucking dying. I ended up seeing her in the green room, and I fucking I still had to glare at her. Yeah, but really? what if she was just deaf? <laughs> she know. wasn't, and happened to get a free ticket. Well, what was she doing in the green room? I don't know. She was a part guest? Of, I don't know. She was one of those fucking people that ends up Bitch. being backstage and you have no idea why. No idea who, how, why. Yeah. Did you go up to her and ask her why she didn't enjoy the uh, performance? No, like an idiot, because I have such a need to be liked. I actually went over and I You said, didn't want to know the I answer. I went over and I said, hey, how you doing? And she kind of blew off my handshake. Wow. So I went in for another layer of... Ooh, you needy go, ass. Yeah. Go <laughs> fuck yourself. Howdy doody. <laughs> Oh, it's awful. <laughs> it's need to be loved. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, that's the worst. I think I walked home to my apartment talking to myself, saying the shit that I had wished I, that I said to her. Well, <sighs> you know, think about it, though. Obviously, it was something you said very early in your act that just pissed her off where she couldn't get past that, and that's all she was thinking the whole time you were up there. Uh, yeah. What was well, your maybe first she joke? just thought I sucked. What, what, <laughs> what was your first joke? I, I bet you it was like one of the first things you said. Well, I do trash women in marriage in the beginning. A lot, She yeah. could have just been going yeah, through a divorce. Right, right. That's what I'm saying. And, and then, did and then you can't get past that point. You're sitting there just like... Yeah, but you never think that when you're on stage. Like, oh, my God, she doesn't think I'm funny. Man. I suck. <sighs> Other, the rest of the crowd's going to figure this out. She's going to start talking to him. I hate that, ne that needy thing, because I do that at, at appearances and stuff. Like, I'm, I'm the one... Opie has no problem blowing people off. I've seen it done. I've seen people walk up to you... Uh, and there are people that absolutely should be blown off and should be punched in the face sometimes. It's just annoying, annoying. And I sit there and I'll plaster the smile on. No, oh, cool. That. Like fucking, what's his name? Paul the intern for uh, Ron and Fez's show. When he sat down at uh, Caroline's and wouldn't leave. And he was drunk and obnoxious. And I should have just turned around and went, dude, c could you leave? I'm, I'm ha just uh, having a moment here. And he just wouldn't stop. And there are people that are like that. You know, you just get them. Some of the fans are assholes. Now you got you got to have a closer. Yeah. As you're grabbing the hands, you're walking away. They won't leave. I always no. go with like, well, listen, man, I'm glad you came out. Glad Doesn't you matter. Had a good show, and I'm already walking away. They'll still follow you. They will follow you. Yeah, I don't know what to do. I smile. <laughs> Anthony, stop playing the victim. <laughs> okay, you have control in this. <laughs> I have none. It's the same because I got to smile. Because I have to smile and be nice. And, and sit there and listen to everything. I can't just go, hey, 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 I'm eating here or something. Well, why invent, not? Invent a family tragedy or something. Why can't you say something? I don't know. It's just it's the same thing Bill just said. This need to be appreciated and and I don't want them going and going. Yeah, I met that guy. What a fucking asshole. You Every, know that bothers me. Everybody wants to be liked. Every yeah. it doesn't matter what you do for a living. It just doesn't matter. That sounded like you're going to go into a song right there. Everybody, Everybody wants, wants to be liked. <laughs> <laughs> you think the guy that puts the dogs to sleep wants to be liked? Of course. <laughs> At the pound, that guy? 
I don't think he cares. Even Saddam Hussein wants to you be liked. You think he wants to be liked? Of course he does. Even Saddam Hussein bon, wants bon. to be liked. <laughs> Everybody wants to be liked. <laughs> Come on, let's get another verse. I don't have one. <laughs> See, now that's one where I think Oprah should have maybe stepped in and done a little... And might maybe stopped it before it got to the song, the second verse. musical number. <laughs> no, I'm going to let you guys spin out. Uh, you're just a little a little summer breeze. We have to suffer because of Dr. <laughs> that's J. That's right. <laughs> you guys are going to be like Hurricane Katrina. I'm going to let you guys yeah, Jay, what all the way to a that? summer that breeze. That little song segment. Wasn't that nice? <laughs> Is that the kind of riffing that you, you wanted to hear between the two of us? <laughs> Watch closely what I do on purpose today now, Dr. J. Uh-oh. <laughs> you have no idea what you have started, because <laughs> it'll make us laugh today, because the eyes are all going to look at me, and I'm going to be like, what? What? Oh, all right. <laughs> we'll go here next. Uh, what is, oh, we were going to go to this clip here. John and, uh, oh, yeah, we were we were up to John and Cortland. John, what's up? Hey, buddy. Hey. Uh, the uh, Reddit Van Susteren clip, uh, Shepard Smith got blown right over in his ass like a box of rocks in that. I know everyone's talking about that. I haven't seen the clip yet. Was it funny? Oh, funny as hell! I, I rewound it five, six times, laughing my ass off. Li- on live TV, he just fell over. Oh yeah. Uh, did he go? Uh, did he blow right out of the right off the screen? No, oh, the cameraman followed him right over onto his ass. He staggered, getting up. He looked like a drunk. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, going back, going back to that, owing money for uh, XM. I still owe my brother a hundred bucks. He just got it for me. I just want to say, yeah, the checks in the mail. But your brother got you XM? Well, I got on a fam- family and friends network. Ah. He lives, down, he lives down in Newburgh. I live up here in Cortland. He got me in and under him. I sold him the 100 bucks. You should have stopped after the uh, Shep uh, thing. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah. Not too late. Or I could have stopped you after the Shep thing. But. The uh, the people on the message boards have uh, uh, taken on that whole thing with punching out. Yeah. Some of the sig pics I've seen in photoshops are huge plane crash sites. Yeah. And one little, like comic strip bubble with punching out nope, in too the middle late. of the wreckage. You started yeah. the too late thing. It's too late. Too late. Uh, Paul in Indiana. Paul, what's up? Hey, guys. How's it going? All right, Paul. Um, Friday night when they were doing this coverage on uh, the did you see the CNN reporter get hit with the debris? Uh, he was standing there and he got covered by a piece of cardboard. Completely blacked him out of the screen. Cardboard, eh? It's yeah, not very exciting. They lost me with this hurricane, though. I didn't see, like, any time people bring up coverage like this, I'm usually, yeah, I saw that. Or that. I usually sit in front of Fox and CNN the whole time. I, they lost me. I, well, I, I of, really had no interest in watching this one. I thought of Anthony when he got hit because he's just wanting anybody to get blown over and hit. See, you, um, you should have stopped uh, before you even made the call, uh, sir. Me. It was awful. <laughs> And Ovi's just leaving him on the line. <laughs> you got any other ideas you want to... <laughs> yeah. just... Did you see anyone else get hit with anything? No, but I know Bill Burr's my new idol. Very good. Bill, That's would you cool. like to talk to <laughs> yeah, a Paul for a little let, while? Yeah, let's riff on this. Yeah. Hey, you're my idol for last week, man. Riff oh, cool. Him and just hammer on him. Good deal. Uh, What's your favorite here. color? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Paul, thank you. Have you played Scratch and Match? <laughs> no. I'm hitting the front page news stories here. Dr. J could call back any time and take it back, <laughs> or it's going to be a long fucking morning. <laughs> uh, it's great. Now we're going to have to bum because of that asshole. I know. Sniper, happily married, ONA Army General. Hey, Opie, if XM is so, with a lot of O's, happy with you and your salary, why haven't they picked up your entire contract yet? Why are you working year to year and can't even commit to uh, buying a house? To a uh, buying a house, you jizz bag with the girlfriend with no boobs. What? You're kidding, right, sniper? <laughs> You're absolutely kidding, right? <laughs> you know when you, uh, you're out of like points to make when you, you fucking jizz bag. Are, you're kidding, right? First of all, they have picked up next year, and I think the the, the year after that. They we, picked up all of mine, by the way, Opie. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, and they just signed Bill. I'm in deep trouble. Contract. <laughs> I'm in deep trouble there. <laughs> and we we said last week that we're uh, looking at uh, buying houses. Why the anger today? Why the anger? Why the anger today? It's starting to affect you, Opie. Let's say hi to Mark. What's up, Mark? 
This is uh, Mark with the Church of Opie. I wanted to say that Opie gets fucking respect, damn it. Church of Opie, the you website. Ignorant son of a fucking bitch. Shut your goddamn mouth. Preach. You would think if there was a web website dedicated to you, you'd be pretty happy, but this uh, Church of Opie website is very, very it's creepy. creepy. It's very creepy. It's very, very disturbing. What's the URL on that? Uh, it's www.churchofopie. Uh, I think it's org. Church of org, like it's a org. real organization. It's not the church, or is it church? I think it's just Church, church. of Opie. All right. Thank you, Mark. You're welcome. All right. We'll uh, we'll take another break. Regroup. They got Opie. Uh, the picture of you on Church of Opie is you behind the clouds with like that oh, holy light coming off from behind you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and their latest news is uh, Opie, America's next dance idol. Will the prophecy be fulfilled? Gym tips with Opie. Why is Opie Day celebrated on December 25th? <laughs> Opie Day. <laughs> Opie teaches us how to beat the crowds. Ugh. <laughs> All right. Get us out of here, Derek, for a little bit. I don't really get what's going on with the Today Show this morning. They're building what? Walls? They're building houses for victims of Hurricane Katrina? Uh, this is some kind of habitat for humanity thing that they're doing. So down there on the skating rink, they're, uh, they're building parts of houses that are going to be a ship somewhere and then built so they got a bunch of volunteers uh, slinging hammers and using saws and uh, building walls and now I guess this is the family that is going to get the house once they uh, they build all the pieces and then uh, ship it to wherever it's got to be shipped and reconstruct it but why yeah. are they building them here um, a publicity thing probably right <laughs> yeah of course the today show so we'd all talk about it yeah uh, we, we were watching earlier and saw uh, some of the today show crew out there, uh, uh, swing, not even swinging a hammer. Who was that that they had out there before? Yeah, Al Roker. Uh, Al Roker was uh, out there, and um, they handed him a hammer. He started singing, If I Had a Hammer, and walked off screen. And Bill pointed out that he probably just hands that to some oh, yeah. the gaffer or something, some backstage <laughs> guy. Swinging. Get this away from me. <laughs> how, how excited would you be if okay, you just lost your house to a hurricane, and now they're giving you another one that's made out of, like, particle board? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you get to see what real crap it's made out of. And we're in the back office watching this, and Ben or somebody all excited. Tracy Chapman's down there building, and yeah. I'm thinking, what else does she have to do? Well, well, that's, she hasn't had a hit since Fast no. Car. She's always looked like a hurricane survivor. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. And who wants your house built by Tracy Chapman? <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> oh, boy, you're seething. This guy has just dug in like a tick. No, I've dug in. Trust me. No, he's dug in under your skin. Oh, watch. I'll dig in back. <laughs> ah. And they're giving him all kinds of stuff. I just saw they got Saints tickets and... That's like embarrassing, man. It is. I, I'm watching this. I'm embarrassed for Did them. You ever, you ever see? This is a good one. Every every uh, every Thanksgiving, whenever they do that, uh, you know, Thanksgiving game and like the Lions play and the Cowboys always play. They always cut during halftime to them, you know, giving out free food yeah. to the needy at like the shelters. And these people, as they pan across the room, everybody's covering the, oh, the head. Of course it's like, they are. These people went to high school with kids. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Just uh, like they want a drop of dignity left. I mean, you just see everybody. The hand goes up over their face, and yeah. they're still just panning across with that camera with the light, just getting everybody yeah. even in the corner. How does it feel to have a nice hot meal today? Could you get the camera out of my fucking face? <laughs> yes. It's very embarrassing. Rita. Weekend today's Lester Holt is there with the latest. Ooh. Lester, good morning to you. Matt, good morning. It's Matt, good morning. We're here. Oh, get to their I'm here in front of a pile of Arthur in many of these areas hit crap. By areas. Yes, there are homes like this. Utterly destroyed, but there are others still standing. Folks, however, can't get in officially, at least to see. That's a non story. Sorry to say. That's this will go uh, today. That's, that's probably it. one of those guys whose front yard always looks like that. <laughs> they just got nothing. They got to go to that guy who keeps the old car in the front yard. Yeah, something tells me a lot of those houses just look like disaster areas. Do you think these guys set up some of these shots? Obviously, there's devastation, but do you think they got some people to help them uh, pile it up to make well, it a little worse? Well, they just said there's a lot of houses that are still standing. God right. knows he's not standing in front of that one. Right. They pick. I don't know if they're piling shit up on top, but you know damn well they're picking the exact angle that that camera is is pointing. They're looking how to how to block it, block it uh, the shot. Right. And where he's going to stand. 
to make it look a lot worse than it is. What if this is the only house that was destroyed on that whole block, and yep. all they have to do is pan to the left, and, and, and there's a whole neighborhood. A whole neighborhood, Fine. right? Fine. Yeah. You know, there's well, some stuff too bad right going there. around on lawns and stuff. Yeah, the, the, those overhangs on gas stations are always flying off these days. Yeah. And that's, uh, you know, it looks bad, but it's not. I could knock a sign over. You know what I mean? Yeah. I could do that. <laughs> Remember in L.A.? Remember the earthquake in L.A. years ago? That one shot that they showed of that street where a water main was broken and a gas main was broken. And uh, you saw this, this big geyser of water and flames shooting out of the street. And the street was like cracked open. Uh, that was the shot that every news uh, organization went to. Mm -hmm. And meanwhile, they, uh, one of them actually showed what was going on. Uh, side to side, and it was perfectly normal. All the houses were fine, but that shot was the perfect stand-up shot. It was water and fire and cracked the ground like uh, what an earthquake is supposed to do. And that's what they're doing in these things. Walk around, find a nasty house, stand in front of it. All right, let's say hi to Rob on Long Island. Rob, what's up? Rob? Hey, guys, what's going on? Hey, hey man. Did you guys uh, get the clip from Family Guy last night, the Opie reference? Uh, I didn't see Family oh, yeah. Guy last night. But I have it. I have it here. If you guys want me to play it. No, the guys are great around here behind the scenes, and they got uh, the Opie drops from Family Guy last night. Yeah, there was also a Stern reference too. Yeah, Stern. I don't know. And what's your theory on that whole thing? Yeah, I think uh, what they're doing is um, coming up with episodes and putting some dialogue in there that they know is going to turn up on popular radio shows. That's pretty much it. They're doing a show to make sound bites. For radio shows. Because then we'll play it and yeah. talk about Family Guy? Yeah. All right. Thank you, Rob. No problem. Well, here's the Howard Stern one they did on Family Guy last night. I say, anybody listen to Howard Stern this morning? He had some strippers in the studio. They sounded hot. Then he made a joke about a Negro. But Robin laughed, so it was okay. Wow. That's his yeah. whole show right there. <laughs> <laughs> you think he's laughing or pissed off by that today? That's pretty much his whole show. <laughs> Holy shit, they summed up this show in seven <laughs> seconds. <laughs> and then there's an Opie character. Yeah. I got to tell you, I was a huge Family Guy fan, and I never I never jumped back on the uh, the old Family Guy. Uh... No? No. I kind of like it still. I, it's I'd, hit or miss. I've seen one or two episodes was, this season. That's it. Is it good? Is it as good as the DVD? It's hit or miss. It's like, you know, I think in any one show you're going to have moments that are really funny, and other ones are like, what? Why they do that? Right. Hmm. Well, here's some uh, drops from last night's show. Although I may not fully understand Opie's management style, he has proven himself a more competent employee than you. Opie was the uh, the boss, um, and he was uh, quite retarded. <laughs> he was oh, great! Sticking his <laughs> great, sticking his fingers in his ears and stuff. Does he say awesome a lot? No, he was just going dar dar. <laughs> that same awesome or dar dar same thing. This is your co-worker, Opie. He is a burden of the state, deemed unfit for mainstream society. <laughs> hey, you don't have to laugh that hard. <laughs> Jesus, it's not that funny, Malign. <laughs> Big laugh from Nathaniel. <laughs> I'm a fan of that show. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, that was cool. That killed 10 seconds. <laughs> what else do we have on that? Whatever. There's a character. I know. Everybody kept emailing and uh, calling up with that. you got to play that. Well, no. We did. We did. That's yeah, all it didn't you sound got. like it was, it was just the same name. Yeah. Yeah. I, I say we get the movie trailers out of the way. We have eight brand new movie trailers that came in over Ooh, the weekend. Well, you know who we got to bring in for this. Of course. We're getting them right now. Laszlo the started bear. us the Opie and Anthony movie trailer, and now we, we're having like a, a quick little contest for the listeners. And Steve loves it. This is for bragging rights, basically. I don't think we have any prizes for the top five, but eventually, when we're done with uh, receiving the movie trailers, we'll give you, you, uh, give you guys your top five. Mm -hmm. Eight. We're waiting. <laughs> waiting. Waiting. What does take Steve so long to get in waiting. here? Waiting. He's very pissed off today, by the way. Forgot to At? He forgot to recharge his car. Is that what it is? Ask him about his condo he uh, he just bought. Oh, no. I think he bought a lemon. Oh, no. Just ask him about it. Here comes Martini Steve. Steve the Bear. Oh, there he is. Right in. See, oh, not many he people. means business today. Not many people yeah, in the studio. He, he touched right down. Yeah, certainly. 
And you got the I Hate You All t-shirt on I today. love this shirt. Keith gave it to me. I like the L's in all are uh, handguns. Little Berettas upside down. Yeah, that's good. What is that yeah. from? I think it's... Is it Mafia Life? Hold on, let me turn around. Of course it is. Enough said, Mafia yeah. Life. Yeah. He's getting a piece of that action, isn't he? Is he God. really? I don't really He's know. He's got to be. He talks about it all the time. He, like, uh, all of a sudden will show up at the studio, and he'll grab a mic waiting for his chance to go, MafiaLife.com! Yeah. Yeah. Oh. It's a cool shirt, though. Certainly I hear it's a pretty is. good game. I don't know. Don't know enough I haven't it. played it. Mm-mm. So, Steve, how's your uh, new condo? Fuck. Oh, no. I have, happened? I have these beautiful granite counters, and I would love to find the people that sold this fucking place to me and smash their teeth into them. Oh, no. Because well, not enough cushy leaves <sighs> on the bottom for hibernation. <laughs> yeah. I, I <laughs> wish that was the least of my fucking problems. Well, back up. You had a really nice condo right outside New York City. Yeah. Your commute was wow, nothing. Steve is booming also. You're... Yeah, we're turning you Sorry, down a little bit. And uh, you decided to get another condo in the same... Wanted a bigger place. And so in the same condo complex, there was one for sale. And, you know, it was newly... Uh, what? No. I'm just thinking how you're not going to be able to resell this fucking thing as you go on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. said, this fucking place <laughs> is a <laughs> shit yeah. No, it's, it's actually... It's, the, the, the reality is it's a bigger place. It's right on the, um, it's right on the Hackensack River. So it's got a Sounds great view. romantic. And, you know, and it's, the fact is, it's right outside, my commute is 12 minutes, it's right outside of Manhattan, and, you know, it's, it's, it's a place where the real estate values, you know, aren't going to go down anytime soon, so I'm happy to have it, but... On the Hackensack River, Wendy! Oh my god, the people, (laughs) the people that renovated this place in order to sell it, chinsed out so much on Mm. the contractors they used, that every, and it wasn't stuff that we were going to find right off the bat with a home inspector... So, oh boy! As I'm living in it now, I'm finding stuff little by little. And you've you only been in this place what two, three weeks? <laughs> a a month, three, maybe two or three days. Oh two no! In days? two days, you're finding shit. You know, it's funny. It's probably like a Hollywood set where you thought you had cabinets and they're just <laughs> fake. There's like nothing behind. Like it. a Twilight Zone uh, yeah, episode where they wake up and they're in a fake house. You go to open yeah. up the cabinet or use the phone and it pulls right off the wall. <laughs> that's that's actually not a bad reference because that's that's the quality of construction we're oh, talking about no. here. They found they they must have found guys that didn't have any like uh, contractor licenses because the the work they did is so shoddy and they're all working it. down at uh, Rockefeller Center today during oh, the Today Show. That's yeah. what you got. And you didn't notice this as you were looking at the place before you bought it? We actually we had a ruthless house inspector who went through and checked everything, and we found a lot of it when he, when he was there, and they went back and fixed a lot of it, like stuff like uh, the dishwasher. They put in a brand new dishwasher, but they didn't space it out right, so when you opened up the door, it was banging into the brand new cabinets they oh put in. Oh my! Oh God. man! Oh, that type of stuff. That Yeek. type of stuff, like cabinets, like brand new cabinets in the kitchen, but you can't open two at the same time because they'll rub into each other. That kind of stuff. Oof. Um. Brand new light fixtures, but... Do you really ever have to open two at the same time? No, but it's... <laughs> when you're searching. <laughs> yeah, when, you're when you're looking searching. around, where the fuck is... That's a good point. Uh, All right. Brand Let's new see. light fixture, when you turn it on, you get electrocuted. <laughs> <laughs> no, little Br- things like that. Brand, brand new light fixture, but when you turn it on, you realize your phone is on a dimmer switch. Dude. Oh your phone? My. Dude, I, my, my, like the outlet that I plug my phone into yeah. is on a dimmer outlet for some reason. So I didn't even realize that until... I, yeah, until a day after I plug in the phone, I'm like, how come the phone down here isn't ringing? Then I turn the lights on in the house, I realize, oh, the yeah. phone just went on. Uh, Steve, we're going to need you to record something tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> make sure you come in kind of early and... <laughs> Dim- I swear to God, my... <laughs> what would everyone sounds like Tara Reid. Uh... <laughs> Hi, Steve. Yeah, uh, make sure you record... This- <laughs> I'm on a jammer switch. I'm so wasted. This is awesome. <laughs> New Tara Reid clips on the way, oh, by the way. I, you yeah. ever see that that movie, the Tom Hanks Shelley Long movie, The Money Pit? Ah, that yes. is. Who hasn't I'm, seen I'm, that? I'm having flashbacks or just. What was flashes. the first thing you found wrong? You're walking around your house. The wiring. Um, the wiring. The wiring. The wiring. I had the phone That's guy. That's just a small problem. And huh? the cable guys in there. Not one cable guy, but four cable guys at the same time. Wow. In the house, rerunning all the cable to every room because the people that had done the renovations, when they put the new floors in and the new walls in, they cut through all the phone lines and the cable lines. Oh, man. So, like, wow. you'd, you'd look at this cable wire coming out of the floor, and you'd pull on it, and instead of, you know, getting, like, a little little bit of give, the whole thing would come out because they severed it some way <laughs> along the... <laughs> you know the contractor had, like, those Time Life home improvement books <laughs> open on the counter now? <laughs> Yeah. What's, what's the rewiring your house? It is 
so bad. And the phone lines were like that, too. So the phone lines and oh, the man. cable lines had to get rerun through the entire house. All right. Oh, okay. you poor bastard. Do you, like, slam a door and you hear plaster coming down inside your walls? <laughs> Funny you should mention it, oh, no. because the latest <laughs> problem last night was the the brand new uh, master bathroom, which is you know retiled and everything has a brand new uh, uh, shower stall with beautiful tile, is leaking through to the fucking living room. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> oh my! The God. bathroom? The bath? The new shower stall? New shower stall? It took. Uh, a it's total upstairs. Of, obviously, it's upstairs on the second floor. It took a total of three showers. Before. So it's not like water's getting uh, on the bathroom floor. This is the actual shower stall that's well, leaking. Well, we got out of the, uh, the first. The first time I took a shower, my oh, my, my wife no. looks at it and says, "That's funny. Look at all the water collecting." And I'm like, oh, no. "Where was it collecting?" On the floor of the bathroom. I thought, well, "Okay, maybe it's just a bad grouting job." It's getting out of the stall and leaking. Yeah, into whatever the, the um. It's called the the pan in the bottom of the yep. shower. Okay. It looks like it's just leaking onto the floor. I'm like, all right, maybe it wasn't grouted right. We can caulk it, and you know, it'll be okay. Oh my god! Three showers later, I'm walking downstairs, and I hear drip, drip. Oh <laughs> no! Oh, you what poor bastard! The hell is that? I look up in the right, uh, in the sheetrock ceiling above the fireplace, which is directly underneath where that shower is. Uh -huh. I see buckled sheetrock ceiling. Just a pool of sweat. Just. <laughs> oh, I'm looking at this, going, oh, you've got to be kidding me! And then it's just dripping, dripping onto this brand new hardwood floor. And uh, I'm like, oh God, what what is this? Have so, you taken it out on your wife no. yet? Just uh, named her? No, no, because she's 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 almost catatonic at what's going on. She went like, to put her head through the wall, <laughs> and it went right through. Yeah, it was with nice barely and, any pressure. Yeah, it was nice uh, no beams behind there to really cause any damage. She didn't was, get any bruises. Nothing. Nice and mushy. So I the, so last night I <laughs> stuck my hand through the sheetrock ceiling and just ripped down chunks of it because. Oh, that's good. That's what you want to do in a new place. Oh, it's well. That, unfortunately, that, that's what you got to do in order to make sure it doesn't. You don't get mold in the. Um, yeah. Well, if you ceiling. see your ceiling dripping, there's a hell of a lot more damage above where, what you're seeing. Exactly. Like when you see a wet spot on on your <laughs> ceiling, uh, it's a lot worse than than what you're right. looking at. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm hoping. I'm hoping oh, that I can the get iceberg. a the tip of the iceberg. Thank you, Bill. So I would <laughs> love to find these people and just smash them. Finds both. out his downstairs toilets made out of styrofoam, <laughs> <laughs> spray painted gray. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like you didn't inspect this place too good. Inspected it really well. Yeah, what happened out, with the inspector? The inspector found a lot of stuff. The first thing the inspector saw was the uh, the toilets weren't secured down. <laughs> like all like all three bathrooms that had been redone, the toilets weren't um, weren't bolted to the floor. Did they enough. let you in the house? There it is over she there. <laughs> Don't get too close. We found we just <laughs> painted everything. So much stuff, like upon home inspection, and we were like, "All right, you know, you and your shoddy construction assholes have to redo X, Y, and Z." And we found a list of twelve things, and we thought, "Okay, that's it." Turns out there was a lot more than that that we just didn't catch, and it wasn't something you were going to find until you'd actually lived in it. There are like, so many things you have to do. No, you know what you got to do? You got to turn on all the water in the house. Yeah, you got to turn on the showers. And hang out and let him let him go run for a while. Yeah. See how long the hot water lasts. Well, that's what that's Things exactly like that. that's exactly what he did. Like he aimed the shower head right towards the drain, and it and for 10, 15 minutes didn't leak. So I'm thinking you're okay. not going to see it. It was probably leaking, but it takes a little while to get through the sheetrock. Yeah, apparently, and that's oh, what we're no. finally seeing. Uh, but Wait, you're, you're saying if you go to buy a house, that's yep. what you're supposed to do. Yeah. Turn on the water, let it run, see how long the hot water lasts. Because sometimes you go into these places, now you need a new hot water heater because the the cold water, after three minutes, you can't have two things running at once. Run the dishwasher, run the shower, check to see how hot it's getting. Well, that's one of the things we knew we God, needed. People we must knew. hate you when you come over. Fuck them. Fuck them. Oh, it's great. We had a, we actually had a great home inspector. And, like, like, and like, for instance, a new water heater was one of the things I knew I needed. You know, yeah. and that's just, it happens. You know, it gets ten, nine or ten years old. You, you have up to their electric it. bill by 200 bucks, and then you're just like, you know what? I'm not going to buy it. I don't want <laughs> it. I'm not making an offer. Turn on the AC. I want the doors open. <laughs> I want to see if you can actually air condition outside, like my <laughs> father used to say. <laughs> what are you, air conditioning in the whole neighborhood? I want to do that with your house. <laughs> you got to. You got to do that. You got to go on uh, rainy days. You got to oh. go when it rains. Take a look around at the windows. All the windows, at the skylights, shit like that. See if that fucking shit's leaking. Okay. It's very involved or, buying a No, it's true. You know, you know they set it up during Anthony prime just, time. Of course they do. Anthony just brings his, his own hose. Yeah, I'm just going to squirt your house. I bring a fire truck with <laughs> yeah. me. Go ahead, hose the roof down. Just climbing up, up on the roof. <laughs> just blasting everything with his hose. Because you just don't know. And the only way you, you know these things is by learning them the hard way. Yeah. The house I'm renting now, and I'm renting it in Great Neck, the roof leaks. Roof leaks. And I find this out that the skylight leaks after a week we, we've been living there and we get a downpour. And I just start hearing boop, boop, 
on the uh, oh. terracotta tile floor, <laughs> right where I decide it's actually about five inches in front of where I decide to put my brand new 65-inch television. Oof. So that was kind of close. That was a close one. And then the air conditioner starts leaking, the condensate on that. So you got to call the guy. He fixes it, but not before a whole line of spackle tape comes down in the living room. <laughs> oh, man. And then it's raining uh, a couple of weeks back, and we notice that over one of the kitchen cabinets, weep, 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 there's drip going on over there. That's and we, I go out to the, the back uh, deck one day, and the whole gutter to the back of the house is laying on the deck. Just <laughs> fell off the side of the house. Then on a windy day, one of the trees uh, by the driveway just fell over into the driveway. And uh, the, um, the moths, I, I have no idea where they're coming from, what they're doing there, but there are moths in the house. A number of... Uh, it's a moth army. They have taken over the house. And you're running a nice house, right? Yeah, very nice. I look like a schizoid at night. I'll be laying there watching TV. Out of nowhere in the dark, my girlfriend gets awakened by me going, <laughs> <laughs> Like, or, or I go, <laughs> <laughs> trying to blow the moth away. It's moths. Moths. <laughs> and there's nothing I can do about it. They're laying eggs in your mouth when you're what sleeping. <laughs> in my ear. But and that's, you know, that's what we do now. We wake each other up by just clawing at the air like lunatics. And uh, that's just what I can remember. And it's stories like things. that that make you, not, make you realize that you might not have it so bad, or at least there's a hundred other people that have gone through the same experience that you have. A Why lot. don't you get, like, netting around your bed? Uh, you want, like, a malaria? <laughs> should, yeah. should buy him, like, a beekeeper outfit. <laughs> <laughs> Sleep them. That would be nice. Here come the photoshops on whackbag.com. <laughs> Anthony and I. We're watching movies, and, and, like, all of a sudden, like, last night we're watching uh, Alexander. We'll talk about that homo movie later. No, say it now, man. And, uh, no, I, I, and then we'll get back to Steve, because... No, I, I, I'll, just... I'll wait a little later, because I, I just want to talk about the, the moths okay, on, yeah. on the TV. They show this outdoor scene, and uh, there's like a mountain range, the Himalayas, and the sky, and it, 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 it's moths <laughs> flying toward the sky, because it's the brightest thing in the room, because the lights are off, and we're joking about, you know, giant moths in the movie. It kind of takes you out of the movie, <laughs> when uh, there's giant moths <laughs> flying over the Himalayas. <laughs> They will go to any light source at all. You click over the, the light over our heads on the, on the, bed, the bedroom set thing to grab something, and like they just flock to They come at you. And they they turn it off. That's and like they come out of nowhere, right? Yeah. yeah. Just, if you have company, you got to try to play it off. Is that a moth? No, no. It's just a plasma screen. That's, <laughs> they, they look that real. We walk into High your, definition television, yeah. you idiot. We walk into your house right now. We're going to see moths. Absolutely. You'll just see one. Absolutely. One. Dude, on the walls, in the hallway, for some reason, they're congregating. When I turn on the air conditioner, they congregate around the return air grill. I think maybe they're slowly the airflow kind of moves them in that direction. But then I, in the morning, I shut the AC off or the house gets too cold. When I go to turn it off, that hallway, I turn the light on, yeah. and it's just moth hallway. <laughs> they're all over the walls. You know they're preparing for an attack, right? Of course they are. They're moths. I know how they act, how they operate. Do you go on a killing spree? Um, no, I, I kill them at my leisure when they kind of fly near me. I'll claw at them or slap them or flick them. Oh, but I get that white powder on Yeah, they're too annoying to, to clean up. I'd rather they just flutter in an area I'm not. I only use the bedroom and, and the living room. Anywhere else, the moths have taken over. They live there. I'm, I'm paying rent for the moths. I don't know what to do about that it. That is so weird. And and they came yeah out of nowhere. One yeah. day, one day they were there. Before they weren't. A time of year. I'm just I'm just waiting them out until winter. I know they can't survive the winter. What if you just crank the AC to the point that they all die? Kind of like that bee movie, the Killer Bees. They drove into the Superdome. Or the Blob, where they put him in the movie theater and turned on the uh, air conditioner and uh, hit to hit him with the uh, CO2. That too. The blob fit into a movie theater? <laughs> the, the original. Oh, I'm sure. Wait, I want to know more about the bees in the Superdome. Like that one of those killer bees? Killer bees? Yeah, yeah. Oh, right. It was yeah. all, they oh. beat the horn on the little uh, Volkswagen bug. Yeah. All the bees came on it, and then they drove into the Superdome, and they turned on the AC, and then they all died. <laughs> what a Holy horrible crap. movie. Are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> that was a really bad movie. I remember that one.
But I think that's the solution. Just freeze them out. out. Freeze them out. I'll crank it down and like 50 degrees. So, Steve, what are you going to do? Um, start calling contractors, and that's really it. Is is just piece by piece. As we find these things, we can just. There's call. no lemon law with the house. Like I don't know. Well, I'm finding that out. I mean, it might just be that I'm screwed. Uh, since you know everything's the house has been closed. I don't know if there's a um no a what period the fuck clause. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know. The that's fuck? a really good question. I mean, it's going to cost it's, you a lot. You, of you money. just have a collage of pictures. You look at you know what the fuck. What the fuck? I mean, come on, <laughs> come on. <laughs> I'm just That's your defense. You yeah. know, it's come on. Yeah. Come on. Like, come on. Well, we, 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 found, like, we found out that they didn't get any construction permits, so I'm hoping that there's something retroactively. Oh, goody. We're hoping that retroactively we can go back and nail them for that. So. so You always find this shit out afterwards. What about Not if they violated some before. sort of construction code? You can't well, that's go exactly. I think that They'll probably that condemn your house, throw you out. You won't be able to live in there. Exactly. Well, thank God I still own the other one, so I can. Oh, you're a two. Oh, look at, oh, you. Look at you. Gee, little oh, mogul. Steve, Steve Trump. Trump. But they didn't pick up our contracts. How are you able to? Uh, yeah. Man, look at you. You're, uh, You're just praying. Ner- a little nervous, I bet. Well, right. you know, the the idea is you rent the rent the other one out to offset the mortgage in the new place. So. Mm. Which All is, right. Wow. A lot of questions for Steve. Let's go to Ben's raw ass. Make it fast, Ben. Hey guys, I just wanted to say that the uh, that the honey pot that was in the ah. <laughs> punch out, punch out, you have time. Yeah, right, see? Right. He, he himself. punched out. He saved himself. He saved himself. That joke right now is flaming wreckage, but he's watching it he's from just, under his canopy. He's just going safe. Back forth. He's safe. That cost him a lot. You know, that's uh I don't right. know, that joke is in flames, but he's fine. Todd, that's how it's what's done. up? Yes, good morning, gentlemen. Love your show. Steve, did you get owner's title insurance? Certainly oh. did. Yes I did did all right check that policy under certain cases you might be covered uh you know if there's no due diligence when they bought the place due yeah. diligence all right there you go a little, yes. little right. advice that helps. that's a good phrase to start throwing around due diligence due diligence. due diligence do your dd uh tony tony hey no all right let's say hi to adam in tampa adam hi fellas <laughs> I want to give a long distance happy birthday dedication to little Jimmy. Hey, Anthony, the reason why we don't see you wearing a shirt more than once because the moths have eaten them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my secret's out. Oh, I hope he's always commented on why I uh, don't wear the same clothes twice. I've never seen that shirt. The moths have eaten everything. And this is the same shirt I wore Friday. Yeah. <laughs> but that's not a very memorable shirt. No, it isn't. It's, it's, a, a, it's just a bland beige. Gray- I was going to say, in the words grayish. of Dice, it's beige. No, it's kind of grayish. There's a gr- and it's got a dark gray, gray and a black stripe right across the uh, chest. And that's it. It's uh, got on action wear. I enjoy this shirt. Thank you very much. <laughs> Let's go all the way out to Wisconsin. Who makes that? Wilson? Wilson. Comes with a, comes with a volleyball net. <laughs> yeah, like, There's no alligator on it. There's nothing. That's a no-name shirt. Just a prop they throw in the box yeah. when you get your volleyball. That's a mannequin shirt. <laughs> Yeah, you're not committing to uh, anything with that shirt. No, you know that, right? No, this is a Monday kind of shirt. <laughs> just, that's like the old sitcoms when you couldn't have any product placement. It just said beer. Yeah. This thing just said shirt. shirt where, <laughs> where the polo horse should be. <laughs> it's so fucking early, I didn't even uh, notice that. Yeah. Uh, really not making much of a Collar's too of a small. Shirt. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it really it's a disposable. Uh, the mods can have this one. Nick in Wisconsin, what's up? Yeah, uh, Steve, I was wondering, was Eric Estrada involved in selling you the condo? Uh, no. Have you seen Eric Estrada uh, walking yeah. these uh, condos down in Florida? But uh, they, the actually, they actually built his house right outside Radio City Music Hall. <laughs> <laughs> did he get in trouble Shipped or something? Down there. The company he was working for did. Yeah, they, yeah. they weren't even selling houses. They were selling land in like some marshy part of yeah, Florida. Yeah, it was land. It kind of made it, it. They made it sound like you were buying a house, and the pictures they would show right. were these beautiful neighborhoods. Uh, with these houses, but you were buying land that theoretically you can build this type of house on. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> you might remember me from Chips. Yeah, and he gets on and hawks his uh, real estate deals, and then they, right. they found out that it was really a sham. Right. Let's go to Trenchmouth, the Damn. trucker. Damn. Trenchmouth. Hey, boo. What's going on this morning? What's up, hey. man? Hey, Anthony, you can go in the hallway with the doggone vacuum cleaner. Just pull the end off of it. You can suck all them bad mouths up, and you ain't got to touch them or smash them. Yeah, they probably suck up real nice in the vacuum. Yeah, but Anthony, Dust buster. Anthony yeah. doesn't want to hear him scream, though. <laughs> I'd love to hear him well, scream. Well, I'd rather hear them screaming than Anthony screaming waking me up in the middle of the night. That's pretty good. Uh, right. Dust buster. 
You just go around the house sucking them all up. That's all you have to oh, do. Yeah. And then they'll yeah. that. And then right. the poor you go little... Go ahead. Back of your throat like Silence of the Lambs. <laughs> your wife's going to be taken out with the tweezers. <laughs> <laughs> and then the poor little fellows will just suffocate in the middle of the vacuum. Good. Uh, Scott in Ohio, what's <laughs> up? Good. Hey, you got to get rid of those moths, man. They'll end up in your cereal boxes and everything else. That's mm. a nice present in the morning. No, I haven't found any in food. That's good. I don't think they're the type that go in your food. These are uh, these are just hanging around moths. Oh, haven't found man. any in the food. That I just remembered. I think I blocked this out. That happened to me this weekend. Really? What? what I was bought it? a box of cereal at a at a bodega. Never a good thing to do. Stop it! Why? So I'm eating uh, corn checks, I believe. And I look down on my my milk after having a couple of bites, and I see like like a like a little one of those little flies, and I'm just like, God damn it! And I throw the whole thing out. I'm thinking it flew in there. Yeah. So the next day, you know, I'm fucking <laughs> just chowing, <laughs> and I look down after you know I'm watching Sports Center, and I fucking oh, look no. down, and there's about seven drowned little bugs oh. in there, and I was just like, you gotta, they're in the bo- they're in the box, <laughs> in the box. <laughs> you know how many you ate? Probably oh, ate a few of them. I, I, 14. Was yeah. I, I, I like brush my teeth. I'm flossing like. <sighs> oh. I think it was unreal. Is it still was a good bowl of cereal until really? I fucking saw so you it, found you know? out. I understand those starving people now. Oh, they'll eat that. Oh, yeah. yeah. God. All right, oh. Steve. Well, good luck on the house. Thank you. That stinks. Did Not Al Roker now. put in your, uh, your dishwasher? <laughs> hey, uh. <laughs> We brought you in here because we got movie trailers. <laughs> oh, yeah, you do. We got eight over the weekend? Uh, no, we got like 16. 16? Those, those are the eight that weren't completely horrible. Ah. Well, yeah, but there's a whole variety here. There's, yeah. uh, you labeled all of them. Yeah, I labeled I mean, there's. I, Steve's very tough with production, by the way. The first one, not bad. Second one, music too loud, no sense. The third one, stinks. Fourth one's okay. Fifth one, could be better, <laughs> decent concept. It's like they're grading like, papers or well, something. They're, they're, you know what? I, I'm trying not to judge them on, on production value because a lot of these people don't have Pro Tools rigs at home. So I'm trying to judge them on content. Like, there seems like they're starting to get the idea behind the concept of the movie trailer. Like, it's got to have some kind of storyline that it's got to follow. But even then, it's falling a little How bit How many short. of these start with, in a world? Mm. See, half of them, I think. Half of them? Uh, hold on two seconds. Um, Neil. Yeah. Uh, your fucking phone screener is a fucking rude asshole. Even Howard's guys are cool, and it takes hours to get through to them. Let Neil through. Please let him through, because I'm sure what he has to say, uh, what you guys screened out and, and decided wasn't worthy for the air, I'm sure it's such genius. It's such brilliance. It's such great conversation. It's going to make for a, a great portion of the show when Neil calls in. What, people are so self-important. This guy actually believes what he had to contribute was so good and the screeners can't figure it out. God, I bet you you stink. I bet you're awful. If he calls back and, Neil, please call, uh, let him through. Got to hear what this guy has to contribute. Got to hear it. What's with all these people that think they know how to do a radio show today? Oh, I bet Neil and then he's got to th- say. He's got to throw that in. Yeah, Howard's guy's a cool man. This is the guy that just calls up every radio show and just never gets through because he never has anything good to say. All right. Well, the sixth trailer, Steve wrote, worth playing just to smash. Which one, oh, is that Carmine's? Yeah. Yeah. Wait, Carmine, he had one last week. Yeah, and it was just he's still as, trying, right? Still, he's trying, but it's not working. Uh, the seventh movie trailer, good music. Clips make no sense, though. And then finally, the Steve from Yellowstone trailer by Dan of the Dead. Above average? Yeah. You it like it follows it follows some kind of continuity. All right. Why don't we uh, take a break and we'll do the Opie and Anthony movie trailers next. How's that? Wait. Right. And we're going to uh, wait for Neil's call as well. What did she do to you, man? Nothing. She was just walking. Tracy Chapman? Yeah, she's a big star today on the Today Show because she's hammering some nails. Said there was a world of hurt going on under her button-down shirt. Right. It looked like she had a beer gut. <laughs> What has she been up to since Fast Car? Nothing. You got a fast car. And I couldn't stand na, 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 na. that song. Do we that have was that? one that had to be shut off immediately when it came on. It was a huge hit for her. Oh. Yeah, she had that up, that one other, other hit there. <laughs> what? Was it another one? Uh, she did have a second song, didn't she? Yeah. What the fuck did it go? A what song? A blue song? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ben. Uh, uh, so yeah. the other one. No, no, no. Well, we got to hear the hit first. Ugh. 
This I wouldn't even hear past this. Boom! I'm out. I was out. Wouldn't listen to this crap. Mix 102.7 with Tracy Chapman. You get a fast car. I want to take it to anywhere. Maybe we make a deal. Uh, I live in a bus station. This is depressing. And it plays it better. <laughs> Starting from zero, got nothing to lose. Maybe we'll make something. Is she just trying to buy a car? Like, what is this song about? Her life sucks, and yeah. maybe if she gets in that car and they just drive fast. You got a fast car. She'll leave all her problems behind. Into a pole. <laughs> <laughs> I got a plan to get us out of here Been working at the convenience store uh, to stay I think she's singing the plot to every Good Time episode <laughs> <laughs> I was just watching that again the other day Anytime someone has good news on that show It's just over Dude, it's like Gilligan's Island they got, They're getting off the island And somebody puts their foot through the bottom of the boat It's like they're getting out of the ghetto And you're psyched, finally Someone's getting out But no, they're uh, not getting out uh, James twisted his ankle there was one where James was supposed to get a uh, a job with the union, and right. uh, he was going to get a raise. It was something like seven dollars an hour, something ridiculous like that. And uh, he went down for the interview. But before he went for the interview, he told uh, Florida to plan and buy everything for this big party. And she's like, "But James, we need this money for the rent." And James <laughs> goes, "Don't worry, we're going to have plenty of money when I get this job." <laughs> And she spent all of their rent money, all the money for the bills, to to have this big party. What kind of party? Just a party that their James is getting a no, good I job. No, I understand that, but you know that much money party. To, to throw into a party. They put some streamers up. Walona comes over. They talk about how I'm getting out of here, baby. And then James goes down, and uh, the guy, of course, the white boss down there, tells uh, him that he can't have the job because he's uh, too old. And that was change. done. Oh, there she is. How bad, how good does it need to get? How many losses, how People much hammering. regret? Ow, oh, motherfucker! You <laughs> All right, that's her latest song. <laughs> Sounds great. Then <laughs> why are you in studio? Well, wasn't she? Didn't she perform on the streets in like Harvard Square in Cambridge? Wasn't she like a street performer and get founded by some record guy? Oh, then I, I think so. I think she was. Actually, I don't mind her. Other than that, Fast Car song was just too depressing. I hate that song. Ugh. All right, why don't we play some movie trailers? James. Opie and Anthony movie trailers. <laughs> Were you done? Job at the Dairy Queen. <laughs> yeah. They're gonna make me manager and everything. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a party. <laughs> there was another one. The. Uh, and white people were... bulldoze down the fucking Dairy Queen. It was always some fucking... Whitey would always screw Ruin up their it. dreams. Always. Walona, the other day, like uh, last night I was watching one, and uh, she go comes in, she goes, Guess who's the new buyer at the boutique? <laughs> and, and everyone's like, Oh, my goodness, that's wonderful. And then uh, some guy from uh, in her uh, uh, life comes back, and uh, he's always some scumbag dressed like a pimp. You know, that comes back and goes, you know, I love you, baby. And he gets an applause break just because of his wardrobe. Yeah, and he, he comes in, in. there like, woo! He's wearing, like, complete leather clothes and a pimp hat <laughs> and gets the woo, woo from the audience. And uh, and they just turn out to be the most despicable scumbags. Like, one was trying to pick up on the daughter from the, the Evans house there. What's her name? The one you like? Oh, uh, Thelma? Thelma. Oh, she like, was Like, cornered, cornered her in the in the kitchen and starts, like, groping her. And this was the one Walona's like, I think this is the one. I think this one's, I'm going to marry him. And he's groping the daughter in the kitchen. They're all like these despicable scumbags. Every dream they have is just crushed. <laughs> Great show. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. All right. And you would think, even though they're poor, I was watching it and thinking, I understand they're poor and everything. But that doesn't mean you can't take a fucking Brillo pad to the goddamn wall. They got those... um. The uh, cinder block painted walls like you get in a school or an institution. And it's just soot covered. It's black. Their cabinets are just filth ridden. And Florida it's seems like the type that would clean up. Though. It's just gear, you wouldn't come off. New, you get a New York apartment. I, you know, that tub's not that bad. I'll, I'll start scrubbing it. And you just you go to scrub and it's just like, tub no, doesn't come off. This is the <laughs> color of the tub. Perma now. dirt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love that show. Are you still getting us back for that Dr. J? Uh, yeah, we're uncle? through with the um, the good time stuff. Yeah, we've been through. If you want to go uh, go on to something else, 
What? <laughs> <laughs> I think we, we exhaust. Yeah, we. Uh, you sure. I could probably dig up another episode, but I'd rather not. Just making sure, because Doctor well, J, J knows how to do a radio JJ show. JJ gets stabbed. Let's see how much we can just bomb with this. Maybe we. Uh, maybe <laughs> that was a good one. Maybe we'll just have Doctor J as part of the show today, and he can tell us when to move on. That was, that was one of the episodes where. Um, was it very special? Norman Lear used to do these sometimes with all in the family or good times. Maud, when they'd have a special episode where rape was involved or something, and it would just end with the audience going, oh, oh. and they'd roll the credits without the music. So, and, and, Very dramatic. And back then, for some reason, th- there was always static when the credits come on, so you just hear like, <laughs> on this silence of just the credits going, and because the, the, the weird... What kind of TV did you have? I've never heard that. Zenith, you ever have a white background on your TV that just makes static... Just goes out of nowhere. No, no. was this back it's when like, the, the Howdy it's Doody program me. was on? No, it Four. wasn't back in the was morning. Else, the Dumont <laughs> Network. You. Yes, an old Zenith. <laughs> <laughs> shut up. Do you remember the Edward R. Murrow show? <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> I don't. Were there people Zenith. dancing as cigarette packs <laughs> in the middle of this show? <laughs> yeah, my when God. the fuck was this, <laughs> Anthony? When the fuck were you born? It was the seventies, and for Confess! some reason. How oh, old are you? For some reason, if it's just a bare white background, yeah, well, uh, it, it it will make a noise. You'll hear like this staticky noise uh, uh, through the speakers, okay. and then the credits would change, and the the okay. nothing, no, no one know, knows about this. That's not that's not static. It's what? That's a noise. Yeah, it's it's white. You know, it's white noise from the was white background. Clara, actually, was that Clarabelle's horn? That no. You were... <laughs> actually, the, Anthony is right because I was in. Uh, I used to. I used to produce some uh, local commercials. Yeah. I'll have to bring in my reel someday. And uh, too much white on the screen, yes, would would uh, make some kind of noise. Now this drives me crazy because in hotels a lot of times the they TVs have the older are TV. Yeah, the older TVs. Because I don't think this and a lot with of the new TVs. A lot of commercials. Uh, they used the, just a white background, like uh, cable. I think does it. Cable Vision does one where it's just a white background with this red writing on it, and the red kind of gets speckled white, and the letters actually get distorted because the background is is white, and mm-hmm. it it goes Aah! makes a really loud noise. It's very and it obnoxious. used to happen with the credits because you wouldn't hear the Good Times music playing in the background because it would be a sensitive, touching episode. And you would just hear that I have noise. No idea what he's talking about. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I've stayed in Motel Sixes. I mean, where are you? You've staying? never seen this happen. <sighs> not that kind of a no. That's the kind of make me put my foot through the screen. It's not static. Yeah, you're right. It's not. <laughs> that's static. It's a a buzzing noise. It's it's a very obnoxious noise. And sometimes when the TV's off, yeah. I hear it in my head. It just goes. Of course Nyeh. you do, Anthony. Of course you do. <laughs> Let's go to Matt in Atlanta. Matt! <laughs> That's those moths hey guys, flying what's around. Happening? Hey, Bill. What's going on? Hey, uh, uh, Opie, I'm going to do your job this morning and bring you back to the uh, to the good times. Oh, thank didn't you. Know, this, didn't know if Anthony could remember the one where Michael fell down the elevator shaft. Because somebody white oh, left wow. it open. <laughs> Look, Bookman was working on the elevator shaft, and uh, Michael turns around and waves goodbye to everybody in the apartment and falls down the shaft. <laughs> <laughs> oh, classic. Classic. That's it, boys. Punch it out. Uh, let's go to Jimmy in Staten Island. Jimmy. Yeah, my favorite all in the family special episode was Edith Booker getting raped. Yeah, yeah did she even get special. raped? I think it was an attempted rape. What are you doing? Yeah. Come on, oh, stop it. it. What are you doing? Now don't touch me. Oh, it was <laughs> awful. This Fuck creepy guy chasing her around the house. <laughs> Ellis and Philly. Ellis. Hey, that buzzing noise was one of Anthony's childhood moths hitting one of the tubes inside his window. <laughs> oh, it wasn't. <laughs> it out. was not. Let's go to Rob in Jersey. Rob. Hey, how's it going? Hey, man. Hey, Rob. I just- I just want everyone to know that Professor Anthony is 100% correct. Ooh. When there is a bright white screen on TV, you will get a buzz, and it's actually really hot video. The video is so strong that it's actually starts to bleed through over the audio track. Yeah. There you go. So, right, I am getting it. instant feedback. To Opie, I can't even read how many uh, I'm getting in support of me. That's Mash fine. used to do the you know silent it ending. That's it's fine. other that's people who have zeniths. Yeah, that's right. That's the, we know we have an older audience as well. We the old zenith TV where you'd click it on, you'd pull the little thing, and we go. Boom. Bill and I just want to know how old you really yeah. are. 
You've been padding your age for... With your RCA phonograph, 642 (laughs) years old. Hey. I'm from New Orleans. Speaking of TV, uh, can we go back to Alexander? Oh, Alexander. I watched that uh, last night. By the way, I hope uh, Mm -hmm. Dr. J realized that I was trying to control when Ant was going to tell that story, and Ant said, no, I'm not ready to tell that story. Right. So I don't really control everything. There are are times when other people do control things. Because the the moth story was more important than I was thinking I could seg into that for you. I never would have gotten back to the moths. You called off the sign. I called the I waved You were the pitcher, and you said, no, I don't want to go curveball. I don't want to go curveball now. I'm I'm throwing heater exactly. heaters for a, for a little longer. I'll get to the curveball a little later. We'll get to it. So uh, now it's are time you for ready the curve. to tell your story about Alexander yes. the Great? Alexander, I was watching that uh, last night. Uh, Oliver Stone's version of Alexander the Great, and um, uh, who the hell's in that? Jared. Uh, uh, Lado, what's his name? I can't watch period pieces. <laughs> no? Uh, the second they bring out those wigs. <laughs> you can, well, yeah, there uh, were some really god awful uh, wigs in the movie. Let me punch it up here so I have my the actors reference. love doing those pieces. They get to use that, those accents. And they get to show their acting chops. They have to go do Shakespeare. How much of a moron do I sound like? The Shakespeare stuff fucking sucks. That <laughs> <laughs> culture shit. Yeah, they always have to put on and uh, the accent and um, speak in that old world speaky. And, uh, yeah, some people can pull it off, do it well. Others, uh, sorry, you can't. Uh, Anthony Hopkins was in it, uh, by the way. Let me see. Um, who else was in that one? Who's the big star? Why can't I get his name, God damn it? Brad Pitt? No! Okay. Colin that, Farrell! That oh, from, oh, as okay. everyone's yeah. yelling, Colin Farrell at their radio. Wait, what show movie was Brad in? He had a period piece recently. Why? Troy. In Troy. Troy. Interview with What's the, the difference between Troy and Alexander the Great or whatever? Uh, believe it or not, Alexander more gay than Troy was. <laughs> and Troy, pretty gay. You saw Troy, too? Oh, of course. I like the uh, the battle scenes. Uh, so not enough Brave battle scenes. I, di- I did. I love that movie. I yeah. gave up after Braveheart. I, I just thought... No, that. Lord of the Rings has good battle sequences yeah, but in that's it. that's not a period piece. Well, it's kind of a mythological period it's mythological. piece mythological. We're talking like about period that. pieces. Well, this is all mythological, too. Greek mythology and... Um, uh, Hold on. Sort of a gay rump. <laughs> it's very gay. <laughs> Matt from Florida, go ahead. Hey, I got a way you can find out how old he is. Yeah. yeah. Grab a lock of his hair and it can carbon date it like they do the mummies. All right. Carbon date my <laughs> hair. Get over here. <laughs> Get away from me with that. <laughs> carbon uh, dating. Uh, I'll be carbon dating Anthony's hair. I just need a little snip. You can't carbon date hair. My it's gotta new, be bone. My new theory is that Anthony <laughs> is actually a vampire. Yeah. You're a vampire. Stop you're, it. You've been coming up with some references that, uh, I don't know, I've been working with you for 10 years, and all these references have been in a vault somewhere. It's the History Channel and the Discovery Channel. That's where I get my info. All right, Troy Gay, Alexander Gayer. Gayer. Now, I heard from, uh, I, I read reviews on this a while back when it first came out in, in the movies, and uh, heard from people that have seen it, and they said uh, that there were some gay, like, <coughs> undertones to this movie. Is it an undertone or an o- overtone would be very overt in your face, right? An undertone would be something that's implied, but you, you kind of think it's happening. Yeah. I just want I just want to say it before I get eight thousand instant feedbacks going. Hey asshole, it's an overtone. I think it's undertone. Anyway, gayness. There was some uh, gay undertones <laughs> in the movie. It was it's an completely gay because the head just pops up a little bit every once in a while, so it's an <laughs> undertone. undertone. It's under, but it's popping up a little bit, so it, it's an undertone. It, it wasn't just implied gayness. Uh, Alexander, the, his character, Colin Farrell's character, was uh, gay. And it started as as like a kid. They had him uh, as a kid wrestling with his little friends uh, like they did back then. And uh, then he gets a little older and he gets his uh, boyfriend. He had his little boyfriend. And that was Jared, uh, Jared Leto. It was a brave performance. Courageous. Courageous. Anytime uh, uh, somebody straight plays somebody gay, they always say that. Well, let me tell you something. Brave performance. The only reason I think people thought it was an undertone of gayness was because they weren't just fucking each other in the ass blatantly. (laughs) 
anyone who said this was gay, uh, like uh, implied gayness, yeah. really needs just man ass gay pornography to go. I think that guy might be gay. Because th this, I mean, he's kissing men. He's kissing men in this movie. And the relationship between him and Jared Leto uh, was just completely a gay relationship. And I didn't know. I, I go into this movie thinking I'm going to see an Oliver Stone, <laughs> some action. some Not that kind of action. I want to see, you know. You were hoping uh, for some sword fighting. That, no, I was no <laughs> yes, sword fighting. Docking. <laughs> you, you needed a docking scene. I was hoping for some docking. <laughs> but uh, I wanted uh, more battle uh, sequences, and uh, they didn't give it. I think that's why the movie kind of tanked. A little too much of this uh, lovey-dovey stuff between men <laughs> and uh, d not enough uh, fighting action. Let's go to Opie's Hog. Opie's Hog, what's up? Hey, uh, um, Anthony, how does this compare with your memories of what actually happened? All <laughs> 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 ah, right. Very funny. <laughs> <laughs> Assholes. So you were very uncomfortable by the gay overtones um, or undertones. You know something? Or... I'm not uncomfortable by it, but it it takes you out of the movie because you're watching and kind of go, Ah, oh, Jesus, what are you doing? When Colin Farrell uh, grabs some guy uh, that just did this homoerotic dance with another man on the floor uh, and grabs him and just starts uh, open mouth kissing him, I can't just sit there and go, yeah, that's really got a great place in this movie. And that you just get taken aback and go, oh, wow. Is that you the know? noise make or is it more like, Ugh. I went like, oh, because the moth was on me. I did that first. <laughs> and then I went, oh, wow, because of the gayness. <laughs> yes. Anytime that happens in a movie like, and, and you know the actor's straight, that takes me out of it if I can see him going like trying to psych himself up to do the scene. Yeah, what movies are you watching that gay men are actually gay and doing this? That no, you're no, 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 I'm saying when somebody's straight. Yeah, that's what I mean. Uh, do you have an option to that? Are there movies that you have seen where gay men are gay and they're doing gay? Who had, didn't uh, Jay Moore, doesn't take you Jay out of the movie? Moore have to kiss somebody? Yeah. In some movie? Yeah, Jay Moore and... Uh, I don't remember. Yeah, from, that was one of those, so it's like Jay straight, so I'm watching yeah. it going like, okay. Guy from Party of Five, I think. Let's ask Jay. I mean, Jay listens to the show every day. Maybe you can yeah. call us uh, later on this week. Cause he, Jay, who'd you make out with, you he, faggot? <laughs> he listens during the replays. Call us up. What goes through your head? Are you saying over and over again, I could do this, I could do this? <laughs> you're reading that down. script? I'm doing one fucking take of this, and that is it. Something has to go Yeah, it was movie head. Go. Scott Wolf. Scott oh, Wolf. Scott Wolf, thank you. In Go. You no, read, that was Ben. When you're reading the script, and it comes up, okay, you walk into the room, now you embrace, and open mouth kiss uh, this man. What do you think? You think it's a great part? I don't want to, like, I really like the script right up until that point. Do you think you could talk the guy out of it? Or do you just go, hey, it's a role, and uh, I'm going to do it? Oof. I'm an actor. Whoa. I'm not. This will get me an Oscar. I'm not buying that. So you liked Alexander the Great? Um, uh, what limited battle sequences there were were pretty cool. But Oliver Stone's kind of bad at it. He directed this, and he's kind of ripping off hoo hoo everybody that has done the battle sequence of late from Braveheart up until now. Like, you know how it's the shaky battle sequence? Not really. Oh, it's very graphic violence, but it's very shaky. It's extreme close-ups, too. I hate that. Yeah, a lot of the extreme close-ups. They did it in Gladiator. They did it in uh, uh, Lord of the Rings. Um, all those battle sequences are kind of... I guess it's easier to pull off if the camera's shaking. Yeah. But... A lot of times the shakiness of the camera kind of makes sense, like it's happening when maybe those big elephants are stomping down and, and the camera will shake a little bit. But Oliver Stone, it just seemed like he was shaking the camera for everything. The guy takes his sword out of the scabbard and it's just sh the camera's shaking. It just got annoying. Take the sword, sword out. out of the, 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 the sheath, the, the scabbard, the... Uh, the holster. The holster, the <laughs> knife holster. Uh, what is it called? Uh, a scabbard. How do you spell that? Uh, I have no idea. I My know. spelling is That's awful. That's how we get you. You but, can't um, spell. <laughs> yeah. When I was on the bounty, I but, used to wear one. <laughs> but they call it a scabbard? Uh, yeah. Did you yeah. know that, Bill? There's no. a few words for it. A scabbard. A I tuned out like halfway through that story. Did so. you? Oh, I'm sorry. And, and how do you know that it's called a scabbard? Um, watching uh, Discovery Channel. I remember... Uh, Forget Aristotle and fuck Socrates. Here comes Professor Anthony. You know, Socrates used to just go on and on. Bill and Burr on. sitting in for Jim Norton, and I see that uh, just like Jim, you're with me on this one. Thank what? God. 
<laughs> well, when Jimmy's in here and, and Anthony just throws out these big words that no one else knows, I, I, I usually turn right to Jim Norton and I'm like, okay, good. You don't know I'm what it means either. certain people knew that a scabbard Same was... thing just happened with me and Bill. We're like, scabbard? Sca what? Yeah, sca I don't know. What? I used to actually have a scabbard. For my, because uh, my rifle went in a you scabbard. Know, you know, if you could spell and my sword, went you, you'd be able to complete the New York Times crossword puzzle <laughs> every Sunday. You know you that, think? right? Yeah. Because yeah. that's the type of crap I that's can't in there. Spell. Yeah. Meh. <sighs> yeah. My rapier has a scabbard. I own a rapier. Dude. <laughs> you do realize that people think we're really cool, right? Oh, sometimes. <laughs> what what the f what is a rapier? It's a sword. <laughs> I own a rapier. Bill, you had to go down. It's that a road. Uh, it's a sword. That's what he. Why do you have the? Just um, in case, as a I, burglar. Do you have like a castle with like knights set up and shit? <laughs> no, in your but I bought one once. The moths fly in and carry them away. You're filming like a low budget <laughs> I horror bought, movie. <laughs> I bought one once at a Renaissance festival. <laughs> Oh, but not one Your of the bad ones. His shirt makes sense now. <laughs> His shirt makes sense now. That's the kind of shirt you wear if you go to a Renaissance right. festival. If you're not wearing <laughs> one of the actual costumes, it's either costume I, or that. Talking or, about or the that shirt. periods of construction. <laughs> walking around when they your, make cathedrals. Walking around with your big turkey leg. <laughs> no, uh, I, I I bought a a rapier there, uh, and it was ve it's a very nice one. It's not like the cheapo iron like uh, uh, banged out ones that rust on your wall somewhere. This one is stainless steel. Very nice, boy. That's and impressive, bronze. Anthony. And it's uh, it's very uh, very nice. And I keep it uh, next to my bed for protection <laughs> from the moth. Because if somebody runs in, uh, how surprised will they be to see somebody uh, try I to see chase that on them the out? The news. <laughs> <laughs> the occupant of the house stabbed the intruder with a rapier. <laughs> They would have to have a whole fucking segment just to explain what it was. We, we don't have enough time. Just call it a knife. Is that one of those... Uh, that's a rapier that's, right there. Oh, it's one of those swords that you have the knuckle protection? Yes, it's the Ugh. knuckle protection used for um, sword fighting in France. Oh, my. Can you imagine Europe. you're robbing somebody and the dude comes out of the rapier and he's got that other hand up in the air? <laughs> <laughs> he's got on, like, tight pajamas. <laughs> I'm God, sir. He's got one of those stupid yeah. Zorro masks on. <laughs> Do you sleep with a Zorro How mask? How awful would it be if I didn't uh, get dressed beforehand and had to be, like, naked with my rapier <laughs> fighting some guy with a gun? <laughs> All right, well, the phones, of course, are Jeez, going. Of Absolutely course they are. Here. Vince in Chicago. What's up, Vince? Good morning, boys. Morning. I actually know how old Anthony is. Yeah. Uh, it's his image on the Shroud of Turin. <laughs> Smart ass. <laughs> All right, let's go to the old trucker. Old trucker, yeah. what's up? Hey, Elpie. Yeah. Have you ever seen Anthony look into a mirror? Yeah. No reflection. No reflection. Yeah, I'm working on that. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Let's say hi to Jimmy. Jimmy! Yes, I figured out the secret of Anthony Cumia. Yeah. He's a Highlander. <laughs> <laughs> he transcends all time and space. My name is Ramirez, punching out. <laughs> Highlander. Highlander. That explains the rapier, right? Oh, You've right. got to decapitate people. Oh, awful. I don't get what this instant feedback is. What? This is this dude. Oh, who, this uh, is Neil? Yeah. Oh, shop vac with a mag light. Uh, we'll get rid of the No, wait, the no, moth. wait. Do you understand what this This is the no. Neil? Yeah. This is the guy, Neil, that got pissed off that we hung up on. Oh, is that it? Because we didn't think it was worthy for our show, so he instant feedback, what do you want to talk about? I was suggesting the shop vac with mag lights strapped to the hose, and you could call it moth wits. Sorry, I'm as pathetic as your phone screen. Please don't ban me. Moth wits. Why would it be called moth wits? Mag light. Anyone? Strap A mag light. Is that, uh, yeah, like a Holocaust? Oh, oh, a Holocaust type. All right. Thank you, Neil. Thank you so very much. You have just vindicated everyone sitting in that room and the phone screener. You, you ass. All right, movie trailers. Opie and Anthony movie trailers. Well, that's where we were. Yes. Uh, the first one came in from uh, Jim in Chicago, Anthony. It's a Big A and Stalker Patty movie trailer. Meet the Big A. Um, and this... <laughs> One man on a search for love. Um, this is Stalker Patty. Well, I'm not scared. And with a little help from some friends, 
they just may fall in love. Uh, Big A, yes. we just want to know if uh, you might have a little interest in Stalker Patty. Yeah, uh, um, I do, actually. Uh, um, uh, um, Patty, uh, would you like to go out sometime? Sure, I'd be happy to go on a date. We got a lot of connections. And when these two get together, watch the sparks fly. <laughs> oh, I'm going to be taking Patty to the Red Lion. Promise me to do a little dancing. We'll hop and bop. The meal is very good. The company is even better. What were we talking about? It must be the wine. <laughs> For Monster Rain Pictures comes a story of love. I don't want to eat out of somebody's <laughs> mouth. Trust. And I don't want to get AIDS or anything like that. Or... And heartache. You know, just want to be, you know, friends. Why can't we be, be, be more than friends? It's still too early. It's a love story that'll tear at your heart. Um, <laughs> fuck you, bitch. Starring Greg Opie Hughes. <laughs> That's it, man. It's over. Anthony Cumia. You stupid fuck! Are you listening to me? What the fuck? Are you? Hold me back. I want to kill her. You cruel motherfucker. And introducing Bill Burr as Dr. Love. Fuck it. That's it. I'm going to fucking rub them out till I drop. Yeah, fuck it. They're all whores. It's the feel-good movie that'll have the whole family saying... Um, fuck you, bitch. Yeah! Now playing on the OP and Anthony Show on XM Radio, Channel 202. Wow. Um, Rated S for some stinky breath and stupid shit. <laughs> hey, that is really that great. Oh, that see? Great. That guy's got it. All he right. knows the We're music cuts in there just like a movie trailer. We're back in the movie trailer business. Yep, had a story to it, the drama, the fun. Oh, it had everything. I laughed, I cried, I felt good about myself. That was one of those feel-good movies. It wasn't it? A trailer for one of those feel-good movies. I want to see it. Mm. Uh, fuck you, bitch. <laughs> she has an old, dried-up twat. <laughs> and he's a young man. Can uh, they find love? I think there's still some juice in there. <laughs> <laughs> One what of those me stupid do? stories. Uh, very good. Big A Stalker Patty by Jim in Chicago. <clears throat> Jim, fine job. The music uh, was perfect, right? Yes. All right, let's go to the next one here. Music too loud makes no sense. <laughs> These are little uh, comments that Steve made next to each trailer. Oh, good. He's commenting. And this is uh, Crazy Scott in his Opie and Anthony movie trailer. In the battle between good and evil, three men return once again to fight with an army unstoppable pets. I wanted to be the first kid on my block to get a confirmed kill. Every day we find a little virus. <laughs> what the hell? I can't even hear it. Think. Come on in here, Steve. That is really funny. Because Steve gets really frustrated. He has to listen to all these things. Wow, Steve, what's going on there, huh? Sorry, what? <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't hear you. So the canopy opened. Yeah, what was going on there? It was too loud. I, it was just the music drowns out anything that's going on, so you really don't know what kind of audio was underneath this uh, this cinematic music. He's so are you telling Crazy Scott to maybe turn down the music a um, little so we could hear this trailer? Telling Crazy Scott your music's too loud. All right, we're gonna give him another shot. Surprise, we're not even gonna listen to any voice. more of that. Didn't cut through. Crazy Scott, send it off to Steve at FoundryMusic.com. All movie trailers go to Steve at FoundryMusic.com. All right? <laughs> the next one you said uh, stinks by Das Burchin. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> da- I can't pronounce his name. I I'm trying to remember which one this was. It, it, it looks like it sounds like he's speaking German underneath it, but I don't. We're really... all about the nicknames on this program, but some of these guys that are regular contributors to the show, we don't really know how to pronounce your yeah. nicknames. Uh, he either it's used... D-A-S-U-B-E-R Chin. What am I missing here? Das Uberchen. What? Is that what it is? Thank you. It's what did you say? Something close to Das Uberchen. And what does that mean? The Uberchen. I have chin. no idea. <laughs> like a big chin. A big chin. All right. I have to clear this up. No, I uh, my home security uh, does not include a cauldron of hot lead over the doorway. <laughs> 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 Hats from Munaki. <laughs> 
but he is building a moat. <laughs> One shovel at a time. Yeah. Steady. <laughs> shovel full at a time. All right, here we go. Das, das Uber Gin. Das, das Super Chin. In the ONA studios, all was good. Until tragedy struck. That fucking thing fell again right on my fucking foot! Then came the bizarre occurrences. He was in a car accident today. I'm gonna walk across the street now. A bill died today. Oh my god. People scared beyond wit's end. I don't know, dickhead! Holy shit. Starring Jim Norton. I'm paranoid and I have issues. And some other guys. With a special appearance by Samuel L. Jackson. I don't remember asking you a goddamn thing. It's the Obi and Anthony show on XM Satellite Radio. Rated F for <laughs> I closed big. <laughs> Uh, I don't know what to uh, think of that one. I, I didn't get it. It didn't no. nowhere. Uh, no, it went nowhere. He kind of did a good job at making it sound creepy during one point, but I don't know what that means. Creepy and why. And non sequitur all over the place. It's uh, just a farce. He used to work on the fade in and fade out of music. Yeah, yeah. it's just, he just. Karma Chameleon came up and down in two <laughs> seconds. <laughs> yeah. Come on, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> <laughs> With Jimmy Norton. All right, well, he's trying. But again, how, how do you judge it? These guys don't have professional editing rigs, so you have to take that out of the equation now? No. Is, it, no, no. People are commenting. They're saying, do th- these people even listen to these <laughs> at, when they're through with them? Or do they just send them a right off A lot of them the come, off with, come, come, with, come with emails that say, dude, I spent four to five hours on this, and I think it's great. You will, too. And then you hear it, and it makes no sense. Well, we got a lot of good ones that have come in. No, I'm not. I'm not completely negating all of them, but I just don't. You know, your barometer gets thrown completely off after 16 or so because you forget the way you have to judge them. Because right. Because you, you don't yeah. know if you're judging them on content. Well, maybe if or, like more people like sent some in, it would like up the average of a good one. I right. Really you know? don't that like that. That would be great. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. And more there, for you to yeah. go yeah. through, Steve. Yeah, I, yeah. I agree with Bill Burr. We just need more people. Yeah. Uh, yes, definitely. Yeah. Send them to Steve at FoundryMusic.com. I think you should send them to Bill at BillBurr.com. I got a. Uh, <laughs> I got a Casio keyboard with some sound effects in my apartment. <laughs> yeah. I, might, I might try to put something together. Whip one up. Bill's gonna try one. Okay, you do that. The next one is by. <laughs> I'll just make it so fucking heinous. You want to kill yourself? Yeah. <laughs> Who's Ray the intern? Ray. Uh, is he here today? No. We have Ray's, an intern named Ray. We do. Ray's the. Um, Which one is he? Hawaiian-looking kid. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. Very memorable. Um, Ray's, Ray's got a great voice, though. Yeah. Ray, Ray's got a really great voice. His production chops are eh, but he's got a great voice. So. And you kind of liked it. You kind of liked it. I see where he's going with it. I see where he's going. He's got a decent concept. I think it's a little too long, though. <clears throat> all right, here we go. Ray the intern. <laughs> all right, hold on two seconds. He loves his voice because it sounds just like Steve. <laughs> That's why Steve likes this so? guy's voice. He's t- you were totally selling the voice. Got a great voice, great voice. Is some uh, like it. it? It it sounds like you. I don't I don't think so. A little bit. Oh my god, it sounds so I'm much listening. like you. Yeah, play it again. Uh, whatever whatever he whatever he says, then you say it right afterwards. Just give a sentence. Some guys have a hard time finding love. <laughs> That's exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's the same kind of tone. There's a little difference, but same tone that your S pronunciation, fine diction. I was just trying to give the throw the kid a bone. I'm not. <laughs> All right, here we go. <laughs> Some guys have a hard time finding love. 
don't, I don't know what I do. Everyone does have a soulmate, and yours passed by in 1990. <laughs> yeah. You're too busy doing shots with your friends. You decide to play one more game of foosball or darts or something. She was at the bar waiting. All he had to do was turn and say, ah, I'm done with the foosball. And you would have met him. She was right there. That's it. I'm going to fucking rub them out until I drop others. Let it love find them. You know the wonderful thing about the relationship of it is that you cannot say you're done and you will never again do this because when it happens, it just happens. So when you finally meet that perfect girl, you just know. So a girl will come across your transom someday. You'll start talking because you're a human being. Nothing will click. Unfortunately, there may be several guys feeling the same way about your perfect girl. Open for to eat her ass. Problem. What? Most people could not hear the trailer. <laughs> Why? Yeah. I don't know. Phasing. Mm, no, I don't think so. Uh, we can hear it. Can what? hear the trailer. Can hear it. It sounds fine. Song's all fucked up. Can barely hear this idiot's voice track on the song. In the headphones, it sounds fine, but Can't in here, hear it. it sounds like it's bouncing off all the walls and coming out of one speaker. Uh, Matt from what? Long Island uh, calling in saying can't hear anything. Yeah, it's out of phase. How's that possible? Hi, Matt. Burned it Yo. Way I couldn't hear it, huh? No, not at all. Well, thank God it wasn't that long. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> thing went on forever, and uh, no one heard it. So we pretty much just played a song for you, I guess, Matt. Huh? It was the movie. Yeah. yeah, I heard the song, and then it sounded like, uh, you know when the Blackberry goes off? Yeah. It sounded like somebody was talking on a Blackberry or something like that uh, in the background. How did that happen? I don't know. I... All right, well, uh, is Ray going to be here tomorrow? Yeah, Ray will be here tomorrow. All right, we'll replay Ray's we'll, okay. tomorrow. Good one, Ray. We'll fix that, right? Jesus. Ray, the intern, Thanks screwing up the show today it. for everybody. Thank you. All right, Matt. Later. How, how is that? That is weird. If we can All hear right. it through the headphones, yeah. fine. I don't See, get there's that. No, there's, no, there's no logic to that because I burned it the same way everything else got burned, so it should, it should be okay, but now I, now I don't get it. All right. Maybe he did something wrong. Huh? Maybe Ray did something wrong. Mm-hmm. You thinking? Yeah. All right, why don't we break, and we'll uh, make sure the rest of these are good. All right, okay. could you do that really fast? Yeah. We yeah, got four more it. Opie and Anthony movie trailers to get to. Yes. We got Tara Reid audio. We got a lot of uh, stuff still to get to today. And on the guest uh, sheet today, we have... Uh, oh, look at that. We have... Uh, wow. Who do we have? Nobody. We don't well, even, it says... We don't even have guests listed that will end up blowing us off later on in the program. Yeah, I Gene, see a name Gene there. Simmons coming by? Bill Burr is not a guest Bill anymore. Burr, well, he's written in the guest he's section. He's a featured player. Featured player. <laughs> <laughs> One of those guys that's down in the six background. six episodes on Will and Grace. That's, <laughs> that's what this is like. You're, You're the right. background guy on an SNL sketch. Is that it? Featured player. Like Jay Moore. When Jay Moore... I see Jay Moore pop up as... They were doing some... Um, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea sketch and it's Jay standing in some like pirate looking shirt in the background not uttering a word the whole time. <laughs> Bill utters? Lots yes, of words. Utters. Standing next to Conan O'Brien. <laughs> you ever see him in the background? 
No, so wow. Like oh, yeah. Tall. Conan O'Brien's <laughs> in the background, background of a lot of skits in the uh, in It was the like older, the late 80s, early yeah, 90s. Yeah, in the older SNLs. Let's say hi to Selena in College Point. Selena. Hey, I wanted to say that I don't understand why these dicks didn't hear anything, because I heard it perfectly clear driving on the 495. Yeah, it all depends. Some people hear it, some don't. Depends on uh, your configuration. Depends on... I just want to say good job, Steve. Uh, Selena, what kind of hardware you got? You got a, what, yeah. Delphi? Um, hey, I have a... Rody 2. Rody 2. Ah. Rody 2, all right. Maybe that's what the deal is. I don't know. All right, Selena, thank know. you. Thanks. Well, we're going to figure it out after these fine promos. We really got to stop taking breaks. Phil Byrne's studio. He refuses to eat. We got a Starbucks uh, run happening. Got to have some apple cake. As we speak, every once in a while, Anthony just gets very excited and yells that he needs a low-fat apple cake. Right. And evidently demands everyone around one have one, too. <laughs> everyone needs to share in the deliciousness like a that shot. is throwing his money around. Ah. I got a five here, huh? Come There's on. enough for all of you. Everyone. I'm allergic Except to apples, so I had to go with the uh, the low-fat blueberry muffin. Allergic to apples? Uh, Who's a... What? Ex exactly. Are you eating a tangerine? Uh, it's a uh, it's a clementine. They're in season. Clementine. You buy them by the box in the supermarket. They're delicious. Why do you always like throw the like the fruit from one hand to the other? Yeah, you do that with everything. Blueberry. Like Big A tapping his fingers. Yeah. Oh, I got my own little taps and things I have to do. Sure. I gotta change the fruit in my hands eighteen times and then no, eat one. I'm not a counter. You don't count. Mm -mm. Mm. It just feels good to do that a couple times. I don't know. It's like <laughs> That's a slinky. All yeah, he slinkies his I Clementine. I was getting to you. Why are you abusing me? Why won't you take uh, Anthony's offer up on a little uh, low-fat apple cake from Starbucks? Because it sounds like it sucks. No, it it's is really so good. good. Oh. I, I, you know what? My deal is I'm going to have a cake. I'm going to have a fucking cake. I'm not going to get low-fat ice cream, you know? Yeah, uh, I hear you on that. I, I, I would have gone for the regular apple cake, but somebody... Uh, whoever turned me on to the low-fat apple cake. It might have been little Jimmy Norton. They don't have regular apple cake. They don't have it. That's the beauty of Starbucks. But you'll never know it's low-fat because it's, of the man-made so chemical tasty. they stuck in there. Right. No, they just say it's low-fat, but if you've got a little... It's not. ...one of those scientist people to, like, look yeah. into it, there's a lot of fat in that. A lot of thing. fat. Of course. Mm hmm I was never into the Drake's cakes and that shit. No? No. You know me? Yankee you know, Doodle. Yeah. I like the Yankee Doodle. Twinkies... Are horrendous. Yeah, those are be bad. Discontinued. Yodels. I like the yodel. You pick the chocolate off the outside, and you're left with the chocolate swirly cake and cream. It's wonderful. Can you think of um, a dessert that's more man-made than Hostess? Those little Hostess pies that we used to get as the kids. The apple pie. Yeah, those Completely are pretty gross. Completely man-made. You, you know what? I never had the balls Wedge. to eat one of those pink snowballs. Oh, those are awful. The coconut uh, marshmallowy snowball. And it's got. I used to have to rip the covering off if I would come across one. I don't know why I would buy one and then throw half of it away when I could just get a piece of cake. But somehow I'd be in possession of one of those. Maybe someone would share. And I'd have to rip that marshmallow stuff off the top and just eat the uh, chocolate cake. Because it, it's not even like a food product. It's like some form of rubber or plastic. I just look at that like, who the fuck is buying those? We, we used to talk about yeah. that about candy bars. Like, who buys a Fifth Avenue <laughs> <laughs> and every time you go into CVS, they're, they're sitting there. Sure Clark, they're, Clark they're, Bars. They're, 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 they don't understand a Hershey bar, right? When's the last time you saw somebody walking down the street eat, biting Chomping into on a biting Fifth, Fifth, Avenue. Fifth, Avenue. <laughs> Fifth Avenue? They've been there since 1979. It's just the same one. What an awful candy bar. From the original delivery truck. Or like those ones, <laughs> like they'll come out with a new candy bar and they have this huge ad campaign. Like Remember Oh Henry? Oh, Henry, When that first yeah. came out, oh, Henry, the candy bar, that's mostly nuts, too. And they have this stupid, like, <laughs> cartoon character running around to the point and made you want to buy it. And they're like, you know what, fuck it, fuck that. They have not had fuck one that. commercial in, M &Ms. in no. 30 years, but they still have that candy bar. There isn't really a, a good candy bar that's come out in the past 50 years. I think everything that, that people eat has been around forever, a Hershey bar. I like the Nestle Crunch Bars. Those are great. Chocolate with sure. the little Rice crispy Crunches a in it. A little crunch to it. I like uh, Twix. I think that was the last good one that came out. The caramel in it. Mm. Mm. Right. Steve, you got the movie trailers? We're going to get into yeah, Nougat yeah, in a minute. Nougat. nougat. <laughs> what is Nougat? <laughs> what is that shit? <laughs> what is it constructed of? I don't know. Worst Nougat, uh, Three Musketeer Bar. Oh. The only way you can eat those is the miniature ones. If you have a whole one, I don't know. You'll vomit before yes. you're done. 
<laughs> All of a sudden, you just it's swirling in your belly. The nougat. The, the bulimic candy bar of choice. <laughs> <laughs> you feel the weight of that nougat. Are you tired of sticking your finger down your throat? <laughs> Take two bites of a full-size three musketeer. And, the and that ones dumpster like a brick. could not be close enough. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that horrible? That's nougat. <laughs> what the fuck? Really fast. Tara wants to say hi. Tara. Hey, guys. How you doing this morning? Tara Reed. Hey, See, Tara we have Reed. guests. It's good to talk to you guys again. You guys have no guests in the show kind of thing today, so I figured I'd call and say hi to Ray and Don Imus. How you guys doing today? <laughs> We're doing good, Tara. Where's Ray Romano? <laughs> you got to help the bit and have Ray <laughs> 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 Man, this alone is not going to cut the mustard. Uh, oh, if you're not going to help me, I'm going to punch out. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's terrible. Uh, that's great. Yeah, we, feel, did, we did that the other day. What am I but, gonna... Well, it's the same guy. He was feeling so good about his new bit that he, he thought uh, he was going to be a recurring role. Not no. a recurring role on the show. I'm not no. doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Rob wants to know if any of us have ever had a payday. <laughs> that's another one of those <laughs> candy bars. <laughs> Who the fuck is buying a payday? And what about those Mary Janes? They still doing the Mary Jane thing? Oh, those were awful. You used to get them for Halloween. That's the that's what I remember. Yeah, from Mary sure. Janes. It was some kind of peanut butter. It was rip awful. your fillings out. Absolutely candy. awful. Heath, a Heath bar. I actually Heath had one of those. Bar. They're not bad. Really? I don't think I've ever had one. No. There's, There's like a top five having. that everybody. No one goes outside of like <laughs> no, that's Hers that Hershey circle. bar. Hershey bar is the top. I think Butterfingers is the yeah the bottom one. Well, let's go though. for the low top five today. Oh, is that what we're doing? Yeah, the, topic? Low the low top five. Top, the worst five candy bars of all time. Someone says, how about the salted nut roll? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's horrendous. <laughs> it's like, about? it's almost like the, a candy bar was supposed to be built around it. Like <laughs> yeah. you went to the factory and it's like, this is the inner workings. All the goodness has been stripped from yeah. this. No one happened you're left with this. The chocolate machine broke down that day, so they're like, ah, just sell it like it is. <laughs> Pump them out. See if hey, they buy this, this ain't shit. bad. Yeah, a whole fucking run went through without getting chocolate right. coating, and one guy bit it and went, I bet this would sell. Send this up to marketing. It's like one of those shitty projects you did when you were like in uh, kindergarten, you made shit out of macaroni and glued <laughs> it to a piece of paper. They did the that with gold like spray peanuts. Paint. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a peanut shit log. <laughs> All right, we're going to come up with the, the, the five worst candy bars of all time. Mm. But first, it's Open Anthony Movie Trailers. We move on with Rick in Phoenix. What's this one about there, Steve-O? This uh, is, um, hold on. You're looking at the track listing. The Grizzly Man by Rick and Phoenix. Oh, he took the, um, oh, I bet it's about Steve. Yeah, he took, uh, he took a bunch of those Jetsons drops and a bunch of drops from the show and mixed it in with the trailer for Grizzly Man, that documentary about the guy who got eaten. And you wrote, could be better, decent concept, though. <laughs> you're, you're really tough. Well, You're I'm, like the tough yeah. teacher in he school. He is. He's like I'm, that American Idol guy. I'm Simon. trying to be nice about him, but he, I'm. I guess I'm trying to be nice. There's not one nice comment really. No. Sure, there is. Even Decent even your nice comments nice. are followed he by something hates else. Them all. No, you know what? I appreciate the fact that they're actually putting effort into them, but then I have to look like this. Take one. points away. Good music clips make no sense. Well, that yeah, of course. If you've got a, if you've got some great music that's trying to set a mood and then you've got a bunch of drops that are completely incoherent then you don't deserve credit for coming up with a coherent trailer alright let's try it out here it's uh, Rick and Phoenix that's uh that's right uh, there you go oh my what did God. I do oh I'm sorry there you go my mistake you made me hate that song <laughs> For 13 years, Timothy Treadwell lived among the grizzly bears in the Alaskan wilderness. During that time, he shot over 100 hours of videotape. Until 2003, when he was killed by one of the bears he had sworn to protect. I absolutely am a morbid creep. I'm here with one of my favorite bears. Look you. He's been with me for over a decade, and he's been my good friend. Oh, he's a big bear. He's a big bear. A very big bear. Wow. Ah, uh, you know what? All right, I'll, I'll totally. Uh, I just. When you spend a lot of time with bears day after day, there's a calling that makes you want to come in and, and spend more time in the world. I came here and protected the animals as best I could. In fact, I'm the only 
protection for these animals out here. You know, yeah, yeah, we did. He was a little, little anxious. Timothy conquered. You know, they're they're very, you know, they're very eager. Some of them over eager. He tended to want to become a bear. Asshole. Most times I'm a kind warrior out here. Occasionally I am challenged, and in that case. And he's running like he's doing a mid-air leap. The kind warrior must, must, must become a samurai. What are they? Um, prongs. I think he had lost sight of what was really going on. Or he got what he was asking for, he got what he deserved. I will die for these animals. I will die for these animals. I will die for these animals. Okay, terrific. And the longhorns are gone. And the drovers are gone. The Comanches are gone. This is my life. This is what I do. I love it. Geronimo's gone. He says, if I don't come back, it's what I want. I certainly was. It is great. Well, there, but unfortunately, you can't really play the audio because there's a um, news announcer audio. And that's my story here for me, Timothy Treadwell, the kind warrior. Uh, I uh, lost me. Yeah, yeah it just lost completely the lost me, this guy. The concept, uh, you know, I got to mm-hmm. give uh, credit to Steve. The concept was definitely decent, but... Uh, it was too long, and he sort of he had it like about 20 seconds in, and then... Was any up. of that audio actually from that Grizzly Bear movie? Yeah. Yeah, that a was a lot of it. Does he really talk to the bear like that? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I got to go see that. That was now. essentially yeah. the, the trailer for the movie, and then he just dropped in, you know, random quotes, and then... Uh, I don't know You're a big be. bear! Yeah. And that movie fell flat because they didn't play the audio of him getting eaten right. at the end of it. If they would have played that, that movie would have been the talk of the country. Dummies. They'll have a director's cut. No. The the stupid guy that was filming the whole thing told the the lady that had the tape to destroy it. <gasps> that stinks. <laughs> exactly. Why? Ever have a Zagnut? A Zagnut. <laughs> 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 That's up there. You know it was a real another real bad one? Uh Marathon bar, remember that? Marathon, <laughs> marathon bar. Like the, their big hook was, it takes, <laughs> it takes forever, forever to eat because there's so much gooey, <laughs> disgusting caramel. <laughs> what is this, yeah, uh, Travis? Pretty bad. It's a list of candy bars. The, oh, and the top ones. You ever have a Charleston chew? Yes. <laughs> All right, here we go. Oh, and you're supposed to stick it in the refrigerator, and that made it better. Right, no, it doesn't. Charleston chew is chewy, Louis. Here we go, <laughs> but not too chewy. According to this dumb website, the top ten candy bars of all time. Are you ready wow. for number ten? The hundred grand. Oh. Number nine. Payday. Stop. Number eight. Dove chocolate bar. What? Isn't that ice cream? That's for like pregnant oh. chicks. Number seven. <laughs> that didn't make sense. Bar none. Bar none? No. Never heard of it. Number six. Twix. I like the Twix. The Twix, uh, very good. Number five. Top candy bars of all time. Kit Kat. Love Kit Kats. Good stuff. Number four. The Reese's Peanut Butter Cups Inside Out. Is that the peanut butter's on the outside? Yeah, these were limited edition. Limited edition, people. The peanut butter's on the outside. It's on the outside. (laughs) It's on the outside, people. It's insane. Look, I'm unwrapping one here. I got peanut butter on my fingers. I got peanut butter on my fingers, people. Be dialing. Be dialing. The peanut butter, it's crazy. You're, Anthony, you're gonna we've it. already sold 40 of these. And I I'm can't telling you, 40. they are moving. Uh, they're moving, people. you got to be dialing now. Get it on stretch pay. If you can't afford it now, get it on the stretch pay. <laughs> that fucking lunatic. Uh, Where did he go? He was perfect. Here we go. Number three. The Snickers bar. And you get a Maguire rookie card. <laughs> we'll give you a Maguire rookie card because there's 85 gazillion out there now. <laughs> Certificate. What was that guy's name? name? Hmm? Don West. Don right. West, yeah. Yep. He dropped off the face of the earth. He went to like announce wrestling. He was doing the wrestling and thing. He was, and he was so good. Like He had a buzz going about him. With that fucking shopping network. Right. And he just... Uh, Who's that other one? Big he, he, got, he got busted for, like, just being completely full of shit. Just selling The one-bedroom apartment. I owe you know, $800,000 oh, for my one-bedroom <laughs> apartment. And he would never say what the fuck he was saying. What he was selling. <laughs> you just take out ads. You put them in the papers. For yeah. what? We'll tell you how to set the ads up, how to place them in papers, and the money will be rolling in. 
And they got the testimonials from the people. I made six thousand dollars in the last twenty minutes. I've never been this happy in my life. I don't know. I'm, I got every color of lipstick. I'm on my period. I'm still happy. And then there are the people that. that and he was just paying them. Of course. I think you. I think you were selling like soap. In ads yeah. in newspapers, and somehow you're going to make yeah, six figures. What are figures. you selling in these ads? Because he never told you what he's selling. It's just the ads themselves that you're taking out and money's rolling in. <laughs> it's like those real estate ads where it's like, no money down. You don't need money. You don't need a house. You don't need credit. What you do is you buy these houses from people and then sell them. And, and people are like... I bought and sold my first apartment building and cleared $85,000. I had no credit. And you're just picturing, is this guy, Yeah. could I buy your house? I have nothing. But I'll buy it from you, and I'll pay you when I sell it. Okay. And people are just saying okay to this. Because that was the guy's plan. No, you, you know it's bullshit, because everyone, anytime anybody's got to be crazy, like running around with question marks all over your sport coat, like, it's fucking unreal. The government's handing out money. You could get a government grant to learn how your telephone works. And they're handing money out. And he's being chased by government agents in the commercial in fast with, motion. With their briefcases. With their briefcases. <laughs> and he's got question marks on. That guy is uh, truly an ass. <laughs> oh, what a dolt. Uh, all right. He's going to get caught with kitty porn. Of course he is. The top candy bars of <laughs> the all time. only logical ending to that. Sell story. kitty porn for money. Number three. After the let's go. Yeah. Number three is the Snickers bar. Ah. That's always great because they, they got you to really think that that's a good substitute for a meal. <laughs> yeah, they've been. Oh yeah, they've been uh, doing that on the commercials. Yeah, yeah. When I, I buy into it, it fills you up. Snickers really penis. satisfies. <laughs> all right. Uh the uh, the second mm -hmm. best candy bar of all time. What is that, Anthony? That's the original Reese's peanut butter cup. Oh, oh the classic. Yes. Chocolate on the those. outside. Yes, mm -hmm. they got uh, they got two bars in the top five. Yeah, good old Reese's. Isn't that wonderful? I and never, heard, I never heard of the, the fourth one. Yeah, the fourth one. Nah, not at all. Limited dish. And the number <laughs> one candy bar of all time is yes. I can't read it here. What is it? Is that blurred it out? Oh, get Uncle Sam to pay your bills. Here's this. Here's the That's guy. That's him. Here's right the guy there. right here. Free money. The get Uncle Sam to pay the, your uh, bills. The screen with there. the question marks. He's got one right on his cock. What is that about? <laughs> How big is it? <laughs> and what is he trying to say? That that government programs will pay you money to do, like, nothing. To do nothing. Here's a good one. Number 14, the Milky Way. Yeah. That's like when you couldn't afford, like, the Snickers is like the Z28. <laughs> <laughs> and the Milky Way is just like, you, you, there's no air conditioning or power steering. i got to call you out on something, though. But when you couldn't afford... <laughs> Weren't they like the same price? Or, or you're trying to tell no, me No, the Z28 was the top of the no, line. No, I understand that, but the candy yeah. bar thing. You said like when you couldn't afford, what, the Snickers, you would go with the Milky Way? What was oh, like they're the same price. I mean, it's more like it's a bare bones uh, yeah. Snickers. Yeah. I was just thinking. Is Thanks the for Snickers getting so bar... technical and sucking <laughs> all the comedy out of that. <laughs> is the Snicker bar, what, 10 cents more than the Milky Way, <laughs> but you can't afford it, so you got to go with the Milky Way? <laughs> and saying. then there was the big campaign. Who can remember uh, the uh, the Mounds Almond Joy campaign? Oh, yes. Sometimes you feel like a nut. Sometimes, sometimes you, you don't. don't. Right? Brilliant. It was the same bar... Only one of them had two little fucking chintzy peanuts laid on top of it under the chocolate. Here's a theory I have about the crackle. No one has ever eaten a full-size one. <laughs> no, You'll they eat only the come in the little miniatures. <laughs> Something yeah. about that red packaging. It's just too much. <laughs> the plain white letters. You're like, that sucks. But when it's a little small, cute one, you're like, all right. Yeah, you pop it in your mouth. Surrounded by a Mr. Goodbar. All right, where were we? We were interrupted because Nathaniel got a question mark guy on the screen. Yes. Oh, we were doing a Opie and Anthony movie trailer. If you have to have something on your uh, website that says this is not a scam, do you see that? <laughs> yeah. Look, free money to pay your bills, keep out of debt forever. Big red letters, this is not a scam. <laughs> says 10,000 little-known government money programs that give out grants. Direct payments and other free money to people of all ages and all incomes. I heard this these are not grants. A scam. These are grants that maybe have been given out once in history, and he's trying to make it sound like if you file the proper paperwork, that uh oh, there's a problem. Oh no. Uh oh. What happened? 
<clears throat> went to Starbucks. Four Starbucks. N- went to four Starbucks. You went to four Starbucks? Yeah, I really Well, you could do that in New York City. Yeah, they're all four on, of them. Four, four Starbucks is on the they're same like block. next to each other. No yeah. low-fat blueberry or apple cakes anywhere. Yeah, I didn't want to come back with the wrong thing and spend your fancy money. You know something? You are the first person we've ever sent out that has not completed this mission. Yeah, I stink. I, uh, There's a lot more than four Starbucks uh, in Manhattan. I'm just saying that. Uh, <laughs> you're going to keep the C-Note or... Uh, uh, do you want it back? Do you want anything else? I didn't want uh, to come back with the wrong thing. I was, uh, uh, fuck nah, I, I don't want it. Suddenly, uh, Bill, I've lost my appetite. Yeah, I know the yeah, feeling. I'm not very hungry anymore. I'll just take my it's sort uh, of a pattern, pattern, back, you know. Hey, I got something for everybody. Yeah, granola. <laughs> Ugh. Ugh. No. Oof. All right. That's the sound, wow, the sound the first of that time bag. I've ever had my money handed back to me. Uh, thanks. Thanks. Uh, All right. He good tried. job. Uh, Thumbs up, yeah. my friend. Back to the movie trailers. This next one stinks. By the way, I saw Bill tip one of the interns the other day. Pretty good too, out in the hallway. You didn't think I saw that? I was walking by. Like, Dad, yeah, would you throw him a 10 or something? No. Oh, Somebody out in the hallway in front of the bathroom. You're like, yeah, keep that. That, does, that doesn't sound good. It made us look really bad. No, I mean, tipping an intern in front of the bathroom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was, oh, wait, maybe I'm, I'm wrong. Help you know, was it for food, I, Bill? Said, I, said, go, I said, keep it, and he, and he refused to. Yeah, I saw he was, like, refusing. And yeah. He didn't keep it? No, he didn't. He came back with all the change. He made us look really bad, though. It was like a prison thing. You know, you can't owe anybody a favor. Yeah, you, you're not allowed to. You, you, but, but you even offering makes us look bad. I'm a bad. nice guy. I'm sorry. You makes know, us I look bad. Try to spread the love. What is a bun bar? That sounds like something Norton would be into. <laughs> bun bar. <laughs> the chocolate <laughs> drops out from between two creamy buns. <laughs> well, <laughs> right on your face. Well, getting Lemonade back. comes out the front. It's all... Getting back to the candy bar thing, and then we'll do the movie trailer thing. Yeah. Uh... Well, Mounds is one of the worst candy bars of all time. Mounds. Uh, that coconut shit. Bun bars, oh worse gosh. than Mounds. I've never heard of it. And then uh, Zagnut, <laughs> worse than Bun bars and Mounds. The Sky Bar is worse than Zagnut, Bun bars, and Mounds. <laughs> but amazing, not even amazing. Amazing M&M Crunchy Candy Bar. Worse than Sky oh. Bar, Zagnut, Bun Bars, and Mounds. And what's the, the number mark? one awful candy bar of all time? Awful? It's it's a take five. Take five. <laughs> it's a take five. The reason I, I'm telling you all this it's is a, it got Dave, no ratings. No. Like, no one has eaten one of these things. It's a Dave Brubeck album cover that they just <laughs> dip in in chocolate. <laughs> it's chocolate-covered cardboard. Has anyone else, has anyone ever had a take five? It's the worst candy no, bar of all time. Never. Could, could send the intern out for a take five, Anthony. Oh. So we could try the worst candy bar of all let's time according that. to his website. How about a Clark bar? No. Let's How go. old is a Clark bar that it's named Clark? Clark. <laughs> like I they named I... it after the hip guy at the candy factory. Clark. There's a name that really just fell by the wayside. Yeah. There was just too many dorks <laughs> with that fucking name. Hey, Clark. Clark. <laughs> Clark. <laughs> Yeah, they named a candy bar after it. That's awful. Is that a peanut butter crunchy thing? Why is Al Roker starting to look like an old retarded kid? <laughs> because when you're that fat and you lose all that weight, your head never shrinks. Yep. Something is going on there yeah, with a him. Big mongoloid head. All right, we're gonna get a take five it looks bar. Looks like an old Barry Bonds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. Wow. All right. Anyway. Are we gonna get a couple of candy bars? Take five. I want to sample a take five. I also want a Zagnut and a Clark bar. <laughs> <laughs> Is he, he's not going to find a Zagnut and a Clark bar? How about a Mr. Good bar? Uh, what, get a Fifth Mr. Avenue. Mr. Good bars aren't bad. Get a Fifth Avenue. How about a uh, yeah, Clark bar is down there. It's yeah. One of the worst candy bars of all time. Nestle well. Crunch coming in at 21. That's really surprising. Yeah, I had to pop that one up on the list a little more. I like those. Yeah. You like the Peeps? You ever eat a Peep around uh, Easter? Hershey's Cookies and Creams. Got I like oh, the peeps. peeps. are horrendous. You don't like Peeps? Peeps are great. Oh, I can only have them fresh. Chips. Right out of the goddamn little thing they come in. Yeah. I like sugar those. Sugar covered like it's just chicken abortion sugar. that you're yeah. eating? <laughs> <laughs> it's just sugar. <laughs> Inside is like a marshmallowy thing. Outside is just sugar. But they're they're great when they're completely fresh, brand new. All right. Uh, and the uh, one thing I hate around Halloween, the candy corn. 
Can Everyone we do the can. movie trailers, get this out of the way for today? Ah, yes. The next movie trailer, where did Steve go? He gave up on us? Uh, this is from Carmine from the Bronx. He left his vehicle right there, though. He walked. Movie trailer by Carmine from the Bronx. This is the second attempt from Carmine. Carmine's been ragging me on instant feedback all morning. Play mine, play mine. It's really good. Play mine. Well, according to Steve, he says in parentheses, so fucking dumb, worth playing just to smash. Wow. Here's Carmine from the right. Bronx. I only listened to him for a couple of minutes. That was all, I swear. Just a couple of minutes. Just a couple of minutes. The Catholic League is praising Infinity Broadcasting for canceling the Opie and Anthony show. The company pulled the plug on the popular syndicated program after the shock jocks encouraged a couple to have sex in New York St. Patrick's Cathedral. The Catholic League has promised promise now to petition the FCC to drop its investigation. Welcome to New York City. Circle Line Tour, $30. Handsome cab through Central Park, $50. Sex in St. Patrick's Cathedral, priceless. So glad Letterman gets uh, the big laughs over our demise. Holy crap, I didn't realize how much of a laugh he got off over that yeah, line faster. at the time. And he worked for the same company. Mm. That's what I always found weird. We did something so outrageous, they fired us. But it was uh, fodder for David Letterman Fair game. for a good week or two after that. I only cried two times in my whole life. I don't even remember the first time. But the second time, I was on the New England Thruway. And all I heard was... What is this? Your mother's box. I, I think that's him Yeah. interjecting. But I can't really tell. This isn't a movie trailer. Yeah, we're goof, by the way. It has two and a half minutes left. We're this bailing. Is just, Carmine, we're bailing. Carmine we're you bailing. are so bad. You have no talent whatsoever <laughs> in putting together anything creative. You know he's screaming at his mother right now. <laughs> Ma, can you believe Ma! what they're saying? Don't touch the hair. <laughs> oh, Carmine. <laughs> you know, I might not be able to put these together, but I could dance down at the disco <laughs> every weekend. Should we play the rest of it? I now? work at the paint store and dance at the disco. Want to play the rest of it now that it, we have acknowledged how let's, bad it is? Let's hear where he was going. Your mother's box, and uh, I was coming off the exit, and tears were rolling out of my eyes. And I put my finger to them, and I licked them, and they were salty. And I said, I'm not going to school anymore because I have nothing to listen to. Mom, I'm not going to Lord. I have to do this what? now. I mean, in this world. You mean, I'm doing a fucking promo, and now I gotta play clips from the show? Who the fuck do these people think they are? They're back, asshole. Ugh. Ooh, dickhead. What? Carmine. Holy crap. Carmine, he just Holy emailed crap. in. He goes, geez, I give up. <laughs> Good, thank Good. you. Good. That's exactly the point. <laughs> Carmine. Holy crap. There's a minute to go. I, I, it's <laughs> a so, minute left. There's things that happen on this show. You want to play stuff from the listeners that is just plain brilliant because everyone yeah. could enjoy it along with uh, your fine radio host. Then there's stuff that is so bad you got to play it so you can goof on it. Then there's things that are so bad that everyone gets uncomfortable and there's there's no yeah. reason to play it at all. We're at that point with this thing. Yep. Right? Yeah. It's just, I don't know where he's going with any of it. He's commenting on his own movie trailer. Bill, you want to hear more? No. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony? Uh, no, 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 it's so bad. We were sort of talking about this in the office Stop. before the show. You know, if you're the pilot and you know you're going to land this perfectly, when you use it to your advantage, though, you see some hot chick and... Hurry, suck like my cock! Seven yeah, <laughs> it'll help my concentration. Start making some deals <laughs> like, hey! In a way. <laughs> Pretty tense up there, Pretty man. Pretty tense. I think I could do this, really? bud. Holy crap. Okay. Thank you. And I was think... I was trying to keep the gag going. I can't even keep the gag going. Uh, instant feedback coming through. Probably the worst one ever. Uh, this shit is horrible. Turn it off. This sucks. Wow. The next one is just as bad. It's, it's by Justin. You Can't be just as bad. You write good music. Clips make no sense. Yeah, I think this is another one of those that's just... Are we going to end up on an up note today? What's the last one is... Um Last one had some context to it, yeah. Oh, great. Some context. Here's oh, Justin's Open Anthony movie trailer. 
In a time when censorship rules the land. You can't say that now. And originality no longer exists. All of radio rips me up. One radio program dares to tell the truth to the American people. Fuck you, asshole. Opium and Anthony and pleasure for me always. Starring. Because I don't know what was going on that day, fuckface. Anthony. I'm getting dressed up. I need some spats. And featuring Jim Norton. I have the metabolism of a glacier. I have no fucking <laughs> idea. Crap, you're right. It's not real. Holy shit, are you kidding me? You take the young lad into the uh, bathroom stall with you. I should be milked into a bucket and then beaten with a belt until I do a sit-up across my fat white stomach. Now playing on Select XM Radio's channel 202. Well, um, oh my God, it, it, it kind of had some entertaining clips in there, but they didn't. Yeah, they don't even have like a movie. No, wasn't like a movie thing though. Yeah, uh, Carmine's back. He says <laughs> I can't find good clips from the show to download. Sorry, guys. Our entire career is online yeah. somewhere to download. Go to oavirus.com. Everything we've ever done. And you can't find clips. And you can even Carmine, I believe in you, man. Send in another one. Come on, Carmine. <laughs> you can do it. Oh, yeah, you can on. do it, Carmine. Yeah. Come on, Carmine. You know what the problem is? Steve is waiting. Oh, yeah, please, you, your, no. your trailers are too short. <laughs> <laughs> so we're not getting oh. to what you know, you're trying to say. I think Phil's on to something, yes. <laughs> yeah, turn it into an epic. No. <laughs> right. A trilogy. No. Take your friends and go to the bridge and then think about it and make a new one. <laughs> <laughs> I right, went to kill myself. Let's see if we can end on an up note as far as these movie trailers go today. This is Possibly. Dan of the Dead. His uh, movie's called Steve from Yellowstone. In an unforgiving world, <laughs> something is out there. And there's characters like, you know, lurking. Wow, Kelly, come on. That's pretty good, dude. That's, that's amazing. Waiting to strike. When least expected. Uh, you want right. to take some phone calls from us? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. All right, let's see. Uh, wow. A lot of callers that are very excited. They want to go and uh, see you guys, I guess. Uh, All right. Let's say hi to Steve in Yellowstone. Steve in Yellowstone. Hey, Steve. Steve. Ramon. <laughs> yes, it's Ramon. Finally, Steve from Yellowstone in his very own full-length feature film. <laughs> Oh, um, <laughs> Witness the shock. Exactly. Coffee with booze does not matter. <laughs> 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 That's enough. We got to go really for you. Sounds like he's too angry. Much, sorry, George. Sounds like he had too much honey in his tea. Ramon, who grabbed the baggage? All right. So somebody didn't... Take their medication this morning. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. Witness the anger and insults. This is a copyright problem because it is, uh, you know, a matter of... Come on! Bring me someone with talent. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about, you fucking what? retard? Yeah. yeah. Have fun in Yellowstone, buddy. Ramon. Maybe you can sit on, like, you know, uh, the old yeah. faithful and have it go up your ass, you stupid piece of shit. Ramon. Wow, wow pretty good. No, <laughs> Lou Graham has AIDS. Oh, shit. What is wrong with him? He got on again. Ramon, bring me a cover band. <laughs> <All right>. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, your collars are all in crack. Ramon, tell this order that is tired. He doesn't care. Ramon, this is Steve. Over and over this and over. This is Steve from Yellowstone again. <laughs> <laughs> Ramon, <laughs> Ramon, Darth Vader has AIDS. <laughs> He's very excited. Steve, go ahead. <laughs> so what? What is with Ramon? Hello. 
everyone loves Ramon. <laughs> See it in the theater near you. Liddy. Liddy and Ramon? Like, what the hell? What? Liddy. <laughs> I like that one. That uh, was good. Dan of the Dead. Steve from Yellowstone. <laughs> See, but we could have just played those clips and left our yeah. balls off. I know. It wasn't really the movie thing. The guy's cheating by using hysterical clips. You might have to make a Steve from Yellowstone promo. You know that, right? <laughs> oh. Oh, Jimmy. that one where, where he was laughing for like a minute and a <laughs> half. He couldn't like even, even speak. Talk. <laughs> that wheezing <laughs> laugh that he was doing. I tried to explain that to everybody I knew, and I was just bombing with it. trying. Can't. To, yeah. yeah. Unexplainable. Like, and then he kept he kept laughing. <laughs> 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 All right, there you go. The latest movie trailers that came in over the weekend, right? Ugh. Oh, we got some take fives? Yes. Ooh. And some... Ooh. Huh? But we're still rounding up some more of them. Oh my God. Let me see what a uh, Take 5 bar looks Why? like. Yeah, throw one over here. We just need a piece. It's from Hershey's? I'm going to eat a whole one. No, we just need a little... Uh, Pretzels, caramel, peanuts, uh-huh. peanut butter, and milk chocolate. Wow, this guy this got fired. This is everything. The guy who came up with this got fired. This is like everything. Hey, what if we take everything that sucks and cover it in chocolate? Well, according to this website, this bar right here got... Oh, good. It comes in two halves, so... Got no ratings. You it if you want a piece. Mm. Well, how's the take five? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not a fan of peanut butter anyway. I hate it. I love peanut but butter. But I'm trying to, like, be open-minded here. The pretzel really takes away from the chocolate and the sweetness that it's supposed to have. The pretzel ruins this. That's what's the problem is. Yeah. Other than that, I don't think it's that bad. It wouldn't be bad, but it would be something else. It would be a Reese's, I think. Right? they got to throw something in just so it isn't another candy bar. How many ways can you mix chocolate and peanut butter and caramel caramel together? It's not bad. Let's throw a pretzel in it. No, mm. it's bad. Yeah. It takes a minute. That it, pretzel starts working. Yeah, then stop eat, yeah, stop eating it. The salt starts and taking wait. over, right? Don't eat anymore. And then just let it, like, sit there. Yeah, the pretzel to... completely takes control. The aftertaste is horrendous. That is an awful candy bar. All right. There is the worst oh, man. candy bar. Take the aftertaste. Isn't that eat horrible? Thing. <laughs> no. Oh, oh, my God. Eat the whole thing. It's horrible. I am not touching another bite. What else you got there? Oh, Henry. An O. Henry. Throw an O. Henry over this way. Yeah, but O. Henry didn't get a bad this rating, did it? Again, gets two. Where's the O. Henry? Oh, 29th place. Out of 41. What's it got? Bars. Um, what the fuck is in this? Let's see. Peanut caramel fudge bars in rich milk chocolate. Isn't that what we just ate with that? Less the fucking pretzel? Isn't everything in rich milk chocolate? Okay. Hmm. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> Let me try. You're acting like this is the first time you've ever eaten it, it, an old hand. I don't bar. eat peanuts. The peanuts in here are so stale and old. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, isn't that awful? This is like something you did like off track betting. <laughs> <laughs> I had the exact in a one and a two. It comes in a two and a one. I didn't have a fucking box. It, it, Give me my old Henry. <laughs> you get it out of one of those old. Remember the cigarette things where you had to pull that knob? Pull the handle. The fucking thing comes down. <laughs> Oh, is that awful? Wow, was that bad? Mm. I that can't get it out of my mouth now. Your teeth. I need some lovely Godiva. All right. Oof. I'm not even faking. I can't look at this. Wow. <laughs> that was even worse. Oof. All right, when we get back, we got to talk about oh. Dirk Jeter receiving some hate mail. What else we got today? Oh, the Demi Moore thing we didn't get into. We didn't get into the Barbara Streisand thing. Ugh. Or the Dick Cheney thing. Sharon Osbourne. All right, we got lots of show to do. Stay there. Hey, where's that candy bar that you just bit into, Anthony? I threw them in the garbage. What garbage fell? Right here. Let me see. Let me see. Come here. They're wrapped in paper. No, I just want to see it. it? No, I don't believe you. Nathaniel, take this. Bring it to the lab. (laughs) We'll get your age. (laughs) (laughs) Bring it to the lab. Oh, the Opie and Anthony lab. <laughs> I cannot get that out of my head. I can't get that. Oh, Henry. Those peanuts were like the ones George Washington Carver didn't use during his experiments. <laughs> they put them in those bars and put them on the shelves. 
I can't get it out of my teeth. They were a prop on Archie Bunker. <laughs> sitting in a little ball <laughs> next to his chair. <laughs> that stupid chair of his. Oh. All right. Uh, Demi Moore and uh, Ashton Kutcher. Ashton Kutcher. This guy, there's something wrong with this guy, man. He's one of the hottest things in Hollywood. He's got the. Oh, M- well, that's your opinion. He's got the MTV cred. <coughs> As friends with P. Diddy. And he's, and he's marrying an older woman. I don't get that. I get the the guy with the uh, the younger woman thing. Trust yeah. me, I get that. Really? I don't, I don't get the older woman with the younger guy. I, I, I don't understand how how it works that way. It's a mommy thing. It's a mommy thing. There's he, nothing else that that could be said uh, about that relationship. You want a mommy. You didn't get enough attention from mommy, and now you have one. I mean, a lot of girls... And you're fucking a... Yeah, you're <laughs> banging your mommy. A lot of girls will agree that guys just uh, get better with age. You've heard that many, many times in your life, right? Yeah. But you don't hear it about the women. I think that's a general. euphemism for they're after your money. Yeah. You think? True. Well, she's 42. She's, she's hot as shit, obviously. Yeah, she's gorgeous. But she's 42. You know, I mean, she That's a ticking time bomb. That's what I'm saying. With a short fuse. What do you got... What's the shelf life on that? Maybe another seven years? Her chin starts dropping in about 47. <laughs> starts getting that turkey look. And oh, he's 27. Yeah. So he could be going mm-hmm. out with like 20-year-olds. And he's 33. She'll be 65. Does that work out? <laughs> no, it doesn't work <laughs> out. <laughs> she might as well be. You, know, Matt, you want to be 35 and your wife's going through hot flashes? Well, speaking of which, because they had a whole bunch of examples of other couples. That's what I'm getting at here. And uh, I just want to say this. Uh, I think uh, Rafe, even though his name is spelled Ralph. Yeah, Ralph Fines. It's Rafe. Rafe Fines has got to be gay. That is my opinion. Wow. He is 42 years old. His wife is 61 years old. You called him gay? I think he'd have something to say about that, Opie. Go ahead. Go and leave. Leave. I- Pardon you. Oh, <laughs> he doesn't oh, seem that you. upset. He pardoned you for thank it. Thank you. What do you? What is he doing with a sixty-one-year-old woman? Fucking her? No. No, I don't even think there's sex in there. Relationship an item since nineteen ninety-five. They met while performing Hamlet together. Ugh, what was she playing? His grandmother in the play. <laughs> uh, that sorry. that is absolutely. A mother issue. He needs somebody to m- be motherly to him, and it's nothing about sex or uh, having fun together. No, it's weird. Being in a relationship. They got a picture of the happy couple in the USA Today. Yeah. And it's obviously an older picture because uh, Ray Fiennes looks younger, and she already looks really old. And this is not. That that's yeah. not. How, how old is That's he? not a recent picture how, showing that she's 61. How old is. is uh, He's 42, she's 61. And they met 10 years ago. Uh, 1995. So, so maybe at the time it, it seemed like 30, a good idea. No, it's still fucked up. 32, 32 and 50. 51? 32, he could still bang an 18-year-old with a certain level of guilt, but he could still do it. <laughs> but instead he's going 51 at 32. Now he's 42, she's 61. Maybe he's mm. a fetish. And then he has a lovely quote in there about, uh, what does the quote say from Rafe? Rafe uh, says, if two people have a strong connection and a strong bond, that's what's important. Certainly in my life, age difference has not been a problem. Mm. Just seems creepy, though, man. You're walking well, around with a 61 year old lady. He's my lady. Awful butterscotch candies laying around her apartment. <laughs> <laughs> Just a big candy theme. <laughs> Would you like a mint? <laughs> What about James? A Rothschilds, <laughs> whatever those, those awful candies are called, <laughs> those old people candy. Would you like a Rothschild? What a Rothschild? <laughs> what? <laughs> some licorice oh, like, candy. Like it has like jelly candy. in it. Yeah, it's horrid candy. Uh, Richard, a Werther's. Yeah. Would yeah, you like uh, a Werther's? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, uh, about the older woman thing. Uh, one thing I could say, or I've got to say, is Jane Seymour. I mean, she's a pretty much older woman, and uh, last I looked at her, she was pretty damn hot looking. I think Demi Moore's got the potential of being at least that hot when she gets older. I mean, look at her now. <laughs> if I was that young and had somebody that hot, would you marry her though? Yeah. Uh, Eventually, she's going to look like Goldie Hawn. <laughs> She really held out on the facelift for a while, didn't she? Yeah. 
before she finally did it. Who, Goldie? Goldie, yeah. yeah. She looks like an emaciated Angela Lansbury. <laughs> All right, well, they're married, and uh, you think she's gonna try? You think she's gonna try to have a kid for Ashton? Uh, that's what they're saying. She's Holy already pregnant, and that's why crap. they're getting married. And, and Bruce Willis just hangs around like, yeah. oh, he parties with them. Yeah, he went to the wedding, well, laughing I think, it I think, up. I think he likes to watch. You think? Yeah, watching that, watching doing, what, doing that hack look where he's got one eyebrow up. One eyebrow up. He kind of smirks his mouth over a little bit, <laughs> smiles. <laughs> you think that's what he's doing? Watching? Let's go. Let's I wouldn't be anywhere around it. No. Why would you go to their wedding? Hey, Luke, Why guy would you half go to their my wedding? age with a full head of hair? Yeah, there he is. Banging, banging out. my ex-wife. <laughs> oh, this guy's laughing. Chris, Kentucky, what's up? Hey, what's going on, man? Uh, yeah, man, older woman's the only way to go, man. I'm 26. I've dated uh, from 17 up to, like, 45. Man, the older ones are the only way to go. Marriage is a little far. I will give you that. I don't know about marriage. Now, why are the older ones the way to go, sir? Well, I, I, there's nothing I can't explain, man. I dated uh, It's not and a Why did you call? You can't explain it. And according to Ben, <laughs> who knows everything, Demi Moore had a miscarriage. Even better. Ooh. That's one good thing about them. Most of them, they've been through menopause and they can't get pregnant, so you can pop your load in them and not worry about anything. Well, that's a great trade-off. <laughs> yeah, but you're thinking about fucking a 22-year-old when you're banging her. <laughs> they, they, well, no, man. The ones I've been with have been hot. I mean, the, the hottest woman I ever had sex with was twice my age. And how old were you? Eight. <laughs> <laughs> I was 21. 21. All right. All right. Thank you, sir. Yeah, man. <laughs> Let's go to Cobra from Whackbag. Cobra, what's up? Yeah, you guys have seen a Swimming Pool. You remember that scene where Charlotte Rampling is nude in the bed? Yeah. She's in her 60s in that movie. Uh, and and she sorry. looked like she was in her 60s. I was not watching that movie for her. That's yeah, for was shit that, sure. But it came up, and I mean... They were trying to sell, like, and uh, blah, blah, whatever her name is, Charlotte Rampling is going to be nude in this movie, and she's in her 60s and completely nude and looking good. Well, for she 60, did not look good. Oh, for 60, you got to give it Dude, to her. Dude. That's what you want to hear. When you are watching a movie where that other chick is running around naked in it, and then they put that old broad on the bed like that, it makes it that much worse. Uh, I know, you might, There might have been point. someone who's into old broads looking at that movie and sees her on the bed and goes, all right, that's not bad. But after looking at that other girl prancing around naked the whole movie, it was like the uh, the scene from The Shining, the woman getting out of the bathtub. Oh, you're being too hard. Regardless, no, no, she looked like she was in her sixties. Some guys, some guys are into the old, uh, old uh, chicks. All right, let's say hi to into Jimmy Norton. Norton. Hey, it's Jimmy. Jimmy, hey guys. how are you? Hi, pal. I'm sick. <laughs> are you? Kidding? <laughs> are yeah, you kidding? What? You what even, happened? You emailed me over the weekend saying that you might be coming down with something. What is it? Cold? I think it's. I think it's strep throat. I'm not sure. Oh. I gotta, I, I'll go see the medic there. There's a medic on set. I'm going to see him and see the strep throat. How are you a guys? medic on set? Yeah, there is. They have a fellow who kind of walks around. Oh, that's got to be a great doctor. It's a John Ritter clause. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. I just, there's a lull I threw it in there. That's is he doing a Pratt fall? No, I think he's having a heart attack. Behind the oh, God. <laughs> All right, let's just uh, finish the shoot. Yeah. Hey, wow, uh, what 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 is it? What do you got? I I think it's strep, man. It really is sore. Your, your like, throat. How much bad hooker asshole have you ate? Not that much, actually. I've been pretty that good. That much. Not that much. So how great is that? That's like going to a different country. You got to get used to the water. Yeah. <laughs> you got to get used <laughs> to the ass. L.A. hooker ass. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy, don't, don't eat the ass. You're not taking care of yourself. No, no, I am, man. I'm just, I'm just, uh, you, know, like, you know, it's like everybody's, you know, you're all crowded into a little area, and eventually there's like one person sick, and everybody gets sick, and, uh, you know. You're going to continue with the, the, the filming, obviously. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to go, I believe, in, you know, I have two hours after the on today, I have to go, uh, with, we're starting the second one today. Doesn't that um, help your character? To that, be sick and not be able to talk? Well, no, <laughs> oh, not, the, the, not the not being able to talk, but you've told us he's kind of like the creepy, uh, the creepy friend or whatever, right? <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of like a douchey character, but, you know, I, I don't know if it'll help or hurt. I mean, it can't be any worse than my acting normally is. I'm just so paranoid I'm going to get fired. I'm obsessed with it. Dude, the, yeah. message, the message board is going crazy. I guess there were a few people, a few fans uh, that went to the taping of the first show, and they said you were killing. Yeah, yeah, they said they were good. I talked to a few of the guys, but it was still, it's still paranoid. Jimmy's though. always paranoid. Remember when he first started uh, here? He was always like, nah, I'm going to get rid of me. 
You're always paranoid. I know, I know. I always worry. You gotta That's have confidence, no Jimmy. I know. You know how it is, Ann. I get scared. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm gonna get <laughs> fucking booted. Did you um, did you find an apartment? No, I'm still in a hotel. You're oh in a hotel? Dude, I, I looked at a place I'm looking at a place all week. I went to a place uh two days ago. And it wasn't bad. It was like a little bit like I wasn't too sure if it's like a good neighborhood. Uh, it was kind of remember where we stayed after that shit hotel they put us in um, on Sunset, the, the 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 Wilshire. Yeah. With the rooftop pool. Yeah. It was right, right around the corner from there. And I'm in, I'm like looking at the apartment. I go around back and I see this car with like fucking wow stickers all over it. And I'm like, what idiot would do that to their car? And the guy's like, oh, she's a girl. She like works for the radio station. And it was fucking donkey sausage. I oh like, no. Two doors down from stupid donkey sausage at her apartment. Uh, so I might move in there. No, huh? No, I might. I don't know. I might. So you know, fifteen hundred bucks a month. That's a lot of money. What um what what did you do with the other place? Uh, I uh, did you get your money back? No, I don't know yet. There's another lawyer dealing with that. Oh, oh boy, no. pending litigation. And I went to a place that I wanted to see up in the Hollywood Hills. Uh, it was like a place that I really wanted, and the guy took it off the market. Um. But I guess the other guy couldn't come up with the money, so I finally went, and I, I'm talking to him on the phone, and he's like, yeah, man, it just opened up. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to go up and see him. And uh, it was really, I wanted this place so badly. I'm on the phone with the guy, and he's like, he's like trying to be funny. He's like, yeah, man, this place has everything. All you got to do is bring your toothbrush. And I actually laughed when he said it, because I, <laughs> I wanted him to like me so badly. I was like, oh, oh. That, place, that place must have everything. <laughs> 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 um, I was really, really, really humiliating. I fucking dressed up. I put on like my my the watch that boss gave me and a collared shirt. I wanted them to be responsible. What a faggot! Yeah. Um, and I went there, and uh, it really it was not in a good neighborhood. It's like you know you get into a shitty neighborhood and you start to see like the uh, like the plain signs for like medical places, like just community dental. <laughs> and it's got a smiling, non-white face on the door. You know, there's never the sign of a good dentist's office when it looks like a fucking 1928 piggy bank in the front door. Oh, God. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That is quite a visual there, Jimmy. <laughs> oh. So how are the hookers treating you out there? I haven't, uh, I haven't indulged much, man. I really haven't. No. I've been pretty good. I'm just really sick today, and uh, yeah. I've been kind of... Uh, Kind of staying away from that a little bit. You know, I got one massage. I think it was horrendous, um, and she was embarrassed, and I couldn't get a rod. It was really humiliating for both of us. So I what, kind of be kind of still it. What's your wardrobe like? A robe? <laughs> Dude, I'm I'm right off Santa Monica. You have no idea. All I got if I really want to get laid, all I have to do is open the door and pop my asshole out. Somebody will <laughs> somebody will show up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I can live out here full time, man. I'm, you know, I'm a little depressed. It's like I kind of like it, but I miss New York. You know? Yeah, I be here. yeah, man. It's cool to be here, but you're like, you're like Woody Allen, man. You're a New Yorker. It's hard for a New Yorker to go out there. Oh, I think really it's like fucking kids. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Have you seen any stars out there, Jimmy? Dude, just Steven Seagal. I met. I got a picture with him. Uh, nobody else, though. No one yet. Nobody. I haven't seen one celebrity except for him, and that was like day two. I went to this thing with Yoshi because the Dalai Lama was supposed to be there, so I was going to try to get a picture of the Dalai Lama. And, That's um, a good one. Yeah, but he turned out he didn't show up, but Seagal did, so I got a picture with him. We were <laughs> once in an elevator with uh, the Dalai Lama. What did he say? Nothing. Nothing, man. He but we looked him in the there. eye. You're not supposed to look him in the eye, and we did. Why not? And nothing happened. Oh, didn't you ever see the movie? You're not supposed to look the Dalai Lama in the eye. You're not supposed to be... Higher than he is. That's right. Like taller, you got a bow. He was higher than us. He had the penthouse I didn't know suite that. at the Ritz Carlton in yeah. Atlanta. Yeah. I think that's when he's a kid. So wait a minute. So everybody was, was a little everybody kid. Was bowing on the elevator. No. And no, I, like he had his security guys with him. We just kind of hung out. Kind of didn't didn't we kind of wave and say hey? Yeah, we <laughs> just try to we try to start some small talk with the Dalai Lama. Yeah. <laughs> As we Dalai rode the Lama. elevator up to our uh, our crappy rooms, and then he went uh, up to the penthouse suite. Mm -hmm. Should have handed him a wow sticker. <laughs> yeah, take a picture. <laughs> yeah. There you go. All right, well, I'm tired, man. I'm gonna go back to bed for an hour. I just wanted to check in. Cause I got an hour and a half actually before I gotta get up. We're doing these Opie and Anthony movie trailers, and one came in uh, for the the movie Steve from Yellowstone. It was pretty good. About what? Just uh, you playing the part of Steve from Yellowstone. Rumo. Oh, that, that, that's all kind of. I couldn't do it that good last time because I'm in a hotel. It was like a little after 7 in the morning. I didn't realize how loud Ben from Boston was. 
So I'm standing there cackling like a fucking idiot. I'm like, Jesus Christ, man, this is really loud. <laughs> well, the trailer didn't go anywhere, but the clips he came up with uh, of you doing Steve from Yellowstone was very funny. Oh, he dubbed in clips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, you guys gotta come out, man. Come to a taping. I, there's a way to get tickets. I'm not too sure how to do it yet, but there's like every Thursday or Friday we tape. But I got two more before I come back, so well, I guess you can come out maybe for the next. What if Bill Burr does the show with who? Yeah, but if we come out, <laughs> can't we just get tickets from you? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, you're you're in that position where you can't really give us tickets. No, I can get them. I just don't know how to do it. Oh, okay. Well, can we just like I don't know, hang out with you? Yeah, of course. Get Why? strep throat. Get strep yeah. throat and stuff. We'll get sick yeah, together. But- if I'm on the set, you know how it is when you're out in another place and your friends from New York come and you're on the set. On the set. You have time for a quick hello, but you really can't be the same guy you are back in New York. <laughs> Getting treated by the <laughs> set doctor. Oh, that's how he would be, too. Um, all right, you guys know you can hang out here. Yeah. Uh, and I got, I got uh, work to do, so you'd be in the holding area. Yeah, getting treated like shit. Hey, getting pushed around by everyone. Huh? Yeah. Friendly. This is my friends from New York. You know, I was just trying to push you off on some PA. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Watch Jimmy hit the stage. Well, I'm the neighbor. Oh, yeah. uh, dude. Fuck it. I really, at one point, well, I'm finished. There was a couple lines I just couldn't get in rehearsal. Like, they were killing, and then I had to change something about the way I did it, and they just fucking bomb. You know how bad it is to bomb? Phil, I'm sure you had to do that when you've done shoots where, like, something gets a laugh, and then you fucking do it too many times, and then something stops working, and you just bombing in front of the camera. Oh, <laughs> no. Yeah, in front of the network execs. Uh, dude, it sweat, was the HBO go- run-through. I bombed so badly when the fucking executives finally came through. I don't think I got a laugh on one thing I said. Oh, no. Yeah, I, was- I, I replaced somebody who got fired, so I was convinced that I was going to get fired. Like it, like, it took at least, like, seven episodes. My manager's finally like, dude, really? they're not getting rid of you at this point. Was, was it counties? Yeah. Okay. Right. That one went nowhere. <laughs> no, there's a... Townies? There was a show Billy did years ago. I'm on fucking yeah. All right, Jimmy. Yeah, fuck show. All right, Jimmy. All right, boy. They're telling us you got to go. <laughs> I know. But... <laughs> who's that? Who's, who's telling you besides all four of our subconscious? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're all wondering who's going to say the line today, you know. Jimmy, yeah, Jimmy was going to say it for himself today. Yeah. Oh, dude, please. I want to let me be. I'm <laughs> sick. I feel like shit, and I got fucking sick breath. You know that sick breath? Uh, you drink your water bottle, and you smell the lid after you drink it. <laughs> Jesus. All right, good. All right, I'll talk to you guys. I'll, I, might, I might call you guys. Uh, I might call you Wednesday. I can't Thursday or Friday, but I might call you Wednesday. All right, cool, Jimmy. All right. Bye, Jimmy. Hang in there, man. I'll talk to you later. All right, Jim. Our Jim pal, Norton, everyone. Jimmy Norton out there. Uh, being in a Hollywood star for HBO. Being a star. And there are people, like I said uh, last week, people that are brand new to the Opie and Anthony program, just coming on board, that have no idea who Jimmy is, that he's part of the show. They completely are comfortable with Opie, Anthony, and Bill. That's the show. That's the only show they've ever known. How about that, Bill? There are people that think this is the show and this is this is it. You really think that? No. Absolutely. Well, wait. You've been doing it for about a week and a half, almost two weeks now. It's the only show they know. Wow, we have new listeners that are only two weeks. Uh, there are going to be listeners that hate Jimmy Norton and want Bill Bill Burr back. Yeah, they'll all, be like, "Where all, the fuck did Bill go? Your show sucks now that Bill is gone, and and Jimmy, this Jimmy Norton guy is here." Believe me. It how happens. do you how we you, see it? How do you replace getting shit on by a transvestite? You really can't. <laughs> you can do is you, ho- you hold the fort. Yeah, you hold down the fort, right? The funny thing is, Jim Norton doesn't know he's fired yet. He just keeps calling in. Oh, not on <laughs> Start the air. That rumor. Not on the air, Opie. <laughs> Start that rumor. <laughs> well, the message boards will take a hold hey. of that. Did you hear Opie? Can we get uh, E Rock in here? You could hear it in his tone. He was serious. Let's get E Rock. Yeah, I got to call him out on something. We've been doing the Opie and Anthony movie trailers, and for the last like week, he's been handing me a movie trailer. I guess he did for our old show or something. And yeah. He wants us to replay it. <laughs> I forgot. Oh, I love when I forget E Rock with his walk on music. Yeah. What's up, E Rock? He's not amused. Have you spent that hundred thousand yet? Some of it. Not ah, long. what are you buying? Furniture. Furniture. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's pretty exciting. That's good. Nice for the uh for the apartment. Mm-hmm. It's Why horrendous. the low energy? Uh, I'm sick. Oh, I've been oh, fighting it since Friday. Oh my god. So why'd you come into work? What do you what do you got? You're not doing anyone a favor. Trust me. We are so germ conscious these days. 
He actually told me this because we had to ride the elevator up, and I was trying to be nice. I'm just thinking to myself, great, I'll be sick by Wednesday. Once you feel any heat from the body, from the breath, from anywhere, you feel heat on you, you're infected. It's over. You're in the hot zone. That's all it takes? Yeah. That heat. It's full of sick. What do you think you have hot that sick. we're all going to have by Wednesday? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, here. My, yeah. uh, my throat is just really bad. Oh, great. Strep throat. That's, that's, oh. that's the one <clears> I get every oh, I'm year. feeling a little. <clears throat> Good. Uh, Strep throat. furniture? That's yeah. exciting. What did you pick up? Furniture-wise? Yes. I haven't gotten it yet. Um, mm-hmm. A bed. A bed. Uh, and uh, a new couch. Where'd you go? Uh, Ikea. <laughs> Why Thanks to f- Big Kev. Look, you know what? That's like that's like the prizes at the end of the Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they had the worst. You win it's all this awful. money, and you, the, the yeah. selection for seven hundred dollars. I'll take the brass bed frame. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Remember that when you used to have to buy the uh, the prizes? You t- spend all that money. How about the cash? And it's crap. Oh my God! He went to IKEA. Why would you go to IKEA? You won a hundred thousand dollars. Not only is it garbage, and I'm sure IKEA does a good job, but it's affordable furniture. You, you got to build it yourself, right? This is a yeah. lot of this stuff. That yeah, Allen wrench. You bring your, yeah. you bring your, Allen you bring your couch home in a box, a few different boxes. You gotta assemble yourself. They supply the wrenches in a little plastic bag, Why would staple you go? to the bottom. There's, There's always a couple stapler. of screws missing. <laughs> Something's missing. They sell furniture that you see at like beach houses. Yeah, yeah. You're not gonna be there all the time. You just need something to fill a room up. Pretty much. I don't need anything oh, is that it? fancy. But uh, when it when it gets delivered, it's not even gonna be set up. What about the bed? You got that from Ikea, too? The, just the bed frame, yeah. Oh, yeah. Not the mattress, though. No. I already have that. That's it's laying on the floor now. and you're On a box spring. It's you're even dull spring, when you go to buy furniture. Jesus. Money bags. Yeah, what are you doing? You want $100,000. Yeah. You Slip went to Ikea. up a notch. Were you smoking a cigar? <laughs> I'd like to see something in a sofa. <laughs> What's this scary... Money hanging out of his pocket. What's this movie trailer thing that you keep pushing on me? Um, it's um, the, the movie Scream. It's a uh, movie trailer of the movie Scream with uh, Andrew Dice Clay mixed into it. I had sent it to you back at the old show. Remember him? Did we play you it on the old show? You sent this in? Yeah. Oh, wow. When you were just a fan. So he, you put this together. We make yeah. dreams come true here yes, on the Open Anthony program. Mm-hmm. He for went from retarded fan young children. To, to working for the show. Yeah. Did we play? We did. I think only once, and that was it. Uh oh. <laughs> Dude, back we used then, to play shit a million times just to, you know, to eat up time. If it was even halfway decent. <laughs> oh my decent. god! <laughs> <laughs> You're admitting that we only played it once. That's, that you know I'm that, aware of. You know yeah. what that means? We never listened to this stuff beforehand, so we'll play it on the air and go, okay, uh, here you go. And throw it to the side, never to be heard again. <laughs> well, let's take a listen here. All right, let's listen. Boundary Music Pictures presents a hairy banana film. Someone is playing a deadly game. It all began with a stream over 911. Someone who's seen one too many scary movies. Now he's taking his love of fear. Who the f*** is calling this house 1130 at night? One step too far. Who the f*** is this? Tell me your name, I'll tell you mine. Ferragamo. What's your favorite scary movie? It's all porno movies. Rub eggs and tomatoes so it's all over your big f- so I shoot one in my pants. Are you alone in the house? Oh, I'm gonna quit. There are certain rules that one must abide by in order to successfully survive a horror movie. Number one, you can never have sex. We'll show what the hope. Number two, ever, ever, ever under any circumstances say, I'll be right back. Because you won't be back. I'm getting another beer. You want one? Yeah, sure. I'll be right back. Oh. Yeah, go for you. He didn't make the rules. He just kills by them. Listen, you little bitch. You hang up on me again, I'll cut you like a fish. Understand? Hey, go for you. Here's a little pen knife. You can cut people's feet when you get mad. Go ahead. Don't answer the phone. Don't open the door. Yeah, just shut up before I choke you to death. Don't try to hide. Everybody's a suspect. Go. That's scary. Scary scumbag, too. I'm over here now, Sydney. Starts Friday. In an O and A market near you. All right, it's good production. Yeah, got any Y two K material? 
Let's say hi to Jason in Texas. Jason. Opie, man, I love the show, but I gotta call you out. You give Eric a hard time about buying that cheap furniture. You're a big millionaire with all the money, and what's in your house, brother? Well, I have a couch. And? I have a dresser finally, but the clothes are on top of the dresser still, by the way. That's yeah. the update on the dresser, because someone was asking about that. It's, it's and? A, and I have a bed. And at least, oh, I mean, at least, hey, he got, you know, a hundred <laughs> grand. You know, what, what's a hundred grand to you? That's two mil back the show. <laughs> All right, I'll try to get a, uh, I don't know, maybe, uh, like, uh, what else can I get? Maybe, uh... Get a nightstand for the first Do you day. own a coffee table? Yeah, I finally got... Oh, I did get a glass coffee table. Oh! Wait, wait, is a coffee table the one that goes in front of the couch? Yeah. Oh, no, I don't have one of those. What, what, what did you get? I guess it would be an end table. You got an end table before you got a coffee table? Yeah, yeah. Mm. Hey, guys, love the show. Punch it out. All right. Jason makes a good point. All right, Eric, thank you. That was wonderful. Good luck with the strep throat. Yeah. How's the auction going? Auction's going good. Up. Ends this week. Quiet. Ends this week? Mm -hmm. As far as what? As far as everything. We've got about three days left. Three days left on the last items? Mm-hmm. On the last items. We raised about 50000 so far, right? Uh, Yeah, about. Very cool. How's that Al Pacino uh, poster? $960 the last time That's I looked. For the Scarface I'm poster signed by one. everybody, including Al Pacino. Mm -hmm. Go to opianthony.com for the link to the Opie and Anthony auction. Mm. There he goes. E-Rock! <laughs> <laughs> Look at him. In time to the music. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, Nick L. says, uh, wow, I remember this. Good work, E-Rock. Now go get your fucking shine box. Oof. Well, uh, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> Crash me saying that. Hey! All right, we're back with the Opie and Anthony program. Bill Burr sitting in for Jimmy Norton, doing a great job for us. BillBurr.com if you want to check out more of Bill Burr. Or on MySpace. Or MySpace? Yep. MySpace.com, there you go. That thing is blown up, that whole MySpace concept. Uh, a couple things we can do before we get out of here. We got a, a uh, latest... Taser video that's up on opianthony.com and foundrymusic.com. Oh, we love the tasers. We're into the taser. We're all about uh, people getting tased these days. <laughs> all about it. What is We're it? All that about shit it. that shoots out? What, it, what exactly is it? Yeah, it's like uh, little uh, wires. And they got little um, little uh, prongs on them. And it shoots into the guy's clothes and then works like a stun gun from a distance. Sends like 10,000 volts into you. Fantastic. Bigger even. I think like 50,000 volts, the new ones. And then, bam, you're out. Electrocution from a distance. Yeah. Well, we uh, we find all the tased, uh, taser videos, and we throw it up on our mm -hmm. websites. We got this latest one, Wife Videotapes Husband Getting Tased. Have you seen this one yet? I saw it without uh, the sound. Very funny. The guy continues to try to uh, get up. Uh, and, of course, <laughs> Why hilarity ensues. Why? Get up. Why? I understand arguing because you don't agree with being tased, and then... You know, you finally get blasted. At that point, game over. Just stay down. Once you're you're tased and you get up, you know you're getting tased again. The best scenario is that you beat the taser and and all of a sudden it doesn't affect you anymore. That would never happen. But if that ever did, what's next? What do you think the cops are going to go? He beat the taser. All right, unhook him. <laughs> He's going home. He won. Then the clubs come out and the real guns come out to shoot and kill you, perhaps. That would be a There's great no reality getting away. show, though. That would be a great reality Beat show. Beat the taser? Beat the taser. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, a Who lot could of, take it the longest? Yeah, a lot of criminals that have, you know, might go to jail, but you give them the chance to not go to jail if they can yeah. beat the taser. Let's see. Ah! Nope. Didn't beat it. How about you? Ah! <laughs> Wait a minute. That sounded like the last guy. They all uh, scream the same way, very similar. <laughs> Is that last sound effect, the guy hitting the ground? Yeah, I think so. It's him falling. Meow! <laughs> 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 Going down like a tree. <laughs> all right, let's listen to the audio of the latest uh, video here. You're gonna have to shoot. No, no, no. Yes, you are. No, no. Yeah, you're right. No, don't, don't. You're sure you're who's there. Okay. You didn't come in here dog dick. I did not dog dick you. You dog I did not dog dick. I'm fine. No, I'm fighting. I'm not. Dog dick. I'm not gonna fight. Dog dick. Well, then throw all your weapons and shoot me. No, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna do that. Don't fuck around here. I'll shoot you. No. Go back Dang. Don't go back in the house. Fuck okay. you. Don't go. I don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
Don't get up. <laughs> Just stay down. Fuck you, kid. <laughs> Come on now, I was your friend all up until now. That's no friend. <laughs> No, I want to record this because. No, ma'am, please, please don't do it. Ma'am, please go back in the house. Hell hath no fury. Yeah. I just want you to know what I've been putting up with. The attitude I've been putting up with. Now that wasn't a bullet. I know. But you know what, Dave? You deserved it because you were chasing no, him around. Ma'am, don't antagonize him. Go back in the house. Yeah, really. <laughs> Ma'am, go back in the house. <laughs> Tasing and talking to the woman. I mean, well, what? That's the same thing? Your attitude around the house <laughs> yes. is terrible. That's on the same level as being electrocuted. <laughs> Stupid whore. I want you to know what you're putting me through. I saw a great one the other night. Do you guys ever watch that show, uh, Cheaters? Yeah, we're talking yeah, about Yeah, I haven't cheaters. watched that. I saw and, uh, this guy, this redneck wow. dude, bald head with like a tattoo on the side. He, I mean, he just totally gets caught red-handed. He's got his hands down this girl's pants and everything. So, you know, they all come running up. And he's, and he's trying to save it between his wife. He's like, honey, I love you. Come on, don't you know who this is? Okay, I love you. And then the other girl, the one he's cheating on, goes, that isn't... She. He said, oh, that's what he said. He goes, you know, we're just messing around. She doesn't mean anything to me. She goes, that isn't true. You said that you love me. And he looked at her and legitimately laughed. <laughs> he goes, I never said that. I told you from the beginning we were just fucking <laughs> straight up honesty. And she just imploded because she knew it was true. And she just goes, get this canvas away from me. She walks away. Then he goes back to his wife. And he's totally fucked, but this guy pulls it out. He's like, honey, I, I love you. And she's like, I'm going to leave you. And he's like, you're not going to leave me because you cause you're my wife. And she, she's like, well, what am I supposed to do? You're out having sex with somebody else? I mean, what's that about? And he's like, well, maybe I've been fucking you for 12 years. And I wanted to fuck something else. <laughs> totally straight up. He was he was like in this zen light state of like honesty, and he just completely pulled all this shit off. Wow, it worked what, for while him. While the host is trying to antagonize, like, sir, sir, this isn't a good time, and he would just look at him and just continue with his horse shit. What a strategy! Complete and utter honesty. Oh, it was great. Maybe God I've been fucking damn. you for twelve years, and I wanted to fuck something else. <laughs> With the whole great. tone of, like, yeah. did that ever dawn on you? Yeah. <laughs> did, did that, <laughs> what did she say after that? I don't know. By the end of it, she was crying. You know, those girls, they always go back to fucking dudes. He's, like, completely yeah. shit-faced, getting in his rig. <laughs> drive and he drives away. Uh, all right. We're running out of uh, show here. I don't know what uh, we could end with here. What is this big A uh, C song from from Paul? I haven't heard it. I hear uh, Paul, No Filter Paul, um, recorded Big A uh, singing Brother Joe's cunt song. You know that song? Oh, okay. Steve, is this good? We need to end on an up note today, man. Better than I thought it was going to be, actually. So. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, it's it's funny just because Big A's a singing it. too. Steve's a tough critic. Yes, he not, is. The, the production is obviously not up to uh, not up to uh, broadcast standards, but uh, oh, but well, then we'll broadcast. Well, 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 yeah, exactly. Well, sorry, you know what Isn't I mean. Isn't this show broadcasting? I realized as as that was coming out, I'm like, don't say it, don't say it. Too late. Uh, not up to broadcast standards. Whoops. I don't know what we're doing here. Up to snooty production guy standards. How about ah, that? Okay, that's better. Um, but they added a new verse to your brother's song. As well. mm -hmm. All right, why don't we uh, take a listen here? You know, first you go through the front stage, and then, you know, if anything's going to happen, there's little walk shoots from there. C is for the way you clap on me. U is because you're ugly. And shows you a peach. <laughs> and it's for you no, know, I never.
told you I found your sister. T, thanks for the hummus. They were better than your mother's. Cunt is all you'll ever be. It's true. Horrible. Cunt, you must be more than one. You're two. Not with the music at all. You. He's carrying the tune though. Your ass is stanky. Yeah. Your ass is always cranky. Cranky. Cunt. <laughs> The word was made it's for you. It's still too early. I gotta get to know you better, uh, you know. P is for the pussy. No man will see. <laughs> A is for the asshole. You should have given up to me. T is for the tits not worth the effort to see. <laughs> I is for the idiot you made of me. Virgin is what you'll always be. Box of fucking take one. Go fuck yourself. Bottle, that's something I'd rather. See, cunt, I can get a better one than you. Idiot! C is for castration. Oh. Drop that on me. You is like urinating. Half a shot is Why free. Why did they decide that it needed more work? N is for some Negro tearing up your leather cheerio. T, you friggin' twat, though will never be forgot. <laughs> Cunt, a little vibrato. Oh, you you've ever been to me. Cunt, and a really big one, and all my friends agree. <laughs> your best slang word for vagina can describe you any finer. Cunt, the words just right for you. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> the word was made for you. Do da ba boo do ba. Cunt, the word was made for you. Fuck you, bitch. Yeah! Oh! 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 Big A, throw him down the gauntlet! Sorry. There you go. You leave with your fucking manhood intact. Good man. There you go. Big A. Yeah. Big A, you turn to me. Oh, wow. All right. Holy Jesus. Whoa! <laughs> boop booby doop boop booby. <laughs> what a wreck! Was he in a tux when he did that? <laughs> Smoking a cigarette, a martini in the other hand. He wasn't bad though, as far as carrying the tune. It's just the the speech impediment. He could not stay on the mark. Yeah. Could not keep the tempo of the song. All right. Well, stay tuned for Ron and Fez. They're coming up in just a few minutes here. But first, yes. we go to the phones to end the Opie and Anthony program. Let's say hi to Pat in Boston. Hey, Pat. Hey guys. Hey man. What's up? I learned that some of the new listeners don't know who our little Jimmy is. Yeah. I don't believe that one. I don't I either. Think, what, well, how would you explain that? If someone's brand new to XM, they just stumble on us, enjoy the show, and know nothing of it prior to uh, when Jimmy went to Hollywood. All right, maybe we'll, maybe we'll uh, explore that tomorrow. Yeah. See if that's actually uh, true. Prozac, sure. Whackbag, what's up? Good morning, guys. Hey. I learned Bill Burr is our version of Oliver, mm -hmm. and that little Jimmy invoked the John Ritter clause. Yes, he did. Right. Uh, bye bye. Uh, bye bye. Let's say hi to Pinchy. Pinchy, what's up? Hey guys, what's up? Hey. Hey, I learned two things today. I learned that peeps are sugar-covered chicken abortions, <laughs> and uh, Goldie Hawn looks like an emaciated Angela Lansbury. <laughs> <laughs> Get an education. Uh, Steve, what's up? Hey guys. Hey Steve. I've got a problem. I love your show. And I love Norton. But y'all going to these damn tangents? What was the number one candy bar? 
Oh, we said that, um, right? We must have. Yeah, we that went we got through the to list. That. Hey, you know what sucks is we never got to that Derek Jeter thing, man. That was something I really wanted to. That talk was about. one thing, and also the um, Tara Reid. Yeah, the Tara Reid will we'll save for uh, tomorrow's show, definitely. And the Jeter uh, uh, getting threatening letters. Yeah, that, by all yeah. the morons That's out there. Time. Yeah. Unless we could save that story for tomorrow as well. Yes. Yeah, I want to talk about that tomorrow, man. All mm-hmm. right. Thank you, Steve. Thanks, Steve. Let's say hi to John on uh, Whackbag. John, what's up? <laughs> West Iceland. John. John from West Islip. Right, West right. Islip. Yeah. Anthony, I learned that uh, Almond Joys have a little, two little peanuts in them. Yes. Okay. Fuck Keith Wicks. Thank you. What did he say? He had nothing. Oh, I don't okay. know. Rob on Long Island, what did you learn on the Opie and Anthony show today? What's going on, guys? Happy birthday, Billy. Yeah, yeah. I learned that Anthony is wearing a nameless mannequin T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. We got a lot done today. Eric, what did you learn on the show today? IKEA furniture is for fancy people. It sure is. Let's go to Dugout Doug. Dugout Doug, what did you learn on the show today? I learned you guys don't know your infomercial people. Don LaPree was the tiny classified ad guy on the beach. Right. Very good. Thank you. Munching. All right. Teaching us a little something. Uh, Rich learned that Steve C. lives with Shelley Long. Yeah, in the money pit. Fast Freddy. Today I learned Jimmy is like Woody Allen in a kid-touching kind of way. Tim C. from Springfield, Mass. Today I learned uh, a bulimic's favorite candy bar is the Three Musketeers. And Mike from Winter Park, Florida. Say hi to my sister. I learned not to eat the hooker ass in California. Bill Burr, thank you. BillBurr.com. This concludes our podcast day.